Hello, fellow songwriters, and welcome to the third episode of the How Songs Are Made podcast, where we talk to notable right. artists about their songwriting. Hello, fellow songwriters, oh, no. and welcome oh, I left, to the I third episode. I left it open. We're hearing me again. The- I was like, hey, there's two trays. <laughs> um, that was great. I did a great job. Let's try that again. We are live. Hello. Um where we talk to notable artists about their songwriting process. I'm your host, Trey Xavier, and today we're going to be talking to Dean and Ollie of the band Archspire about how they wrote their most recent album, Bleed the Future. First, a couple quick factoids about Bleed the Future. It was released on October 29th of this year. It was produced once again by Dave Otero at Flatline Audio, who also produced their previous album, Relentless Mutation. Uh, Bleed the Future hit... uh, just a a ridiculous number of billboard um award or you know um numbers i'm not going to list them all but notably uh number two on the top new artists uh number five on current hard music albums number seven on heat seekers and just a slew of others Um, and the band has just announced their tech trek five tour with entheos in fairy and volvodinia so please give a very warm welcome to Dean and Ollie from Archspire. Hi. Hello oh, yeah. today. Hi. What are we doing here? Can I just make chewing sounds? Right <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, it's it's ASMR. It's an ASMR stream. Absolutely right. disgusting. Never used a microphone before, so this is very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. Um, you got that. You got that mic technique. You're like, what? <laughs> um, I'm gonna try to cup the podcast mic. Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> you should do that. Get that. What's it called? The proximity effect. Really working for you. Don't don't confuse this with your technical mumbo jumbo. All that jargon. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know what these things do. I just. Uh, Jeez. So I forgot how handsome you were. I forgot how handsome you were. Yeah, it's been just, a while. Well, I look kind of fat in the shirt. A trio of eggs over here. Oh, a trio. Okay. A tri- oh, yeah. Dean. As long as you extend the compliment to me as well. Yes. Yeah. We all we are all looking great. I'm trying to remember the last time that we got to hang out, and it's been a. I mean, I I would have seen Dean at Nam probably whatever the most recent one was that you went to. Yeah. Does this make me look weird if I sit like this? Uh, this is weird. This is kind of a strange th- hand motion here. I mean, weird is relative. Um, is it too suggestive? Weirder than you you usually do. What no. if I open up this robe a yeah. little bit? <laughs> I'm. I mean, it's will that, this that podcast. For yeah. Is that going to ring your doorbell? Might be real yeah. short. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we saw each other at Nam very briefly because you were so busy. You're a busy man. You're. A, I am. I'm a busy man. I'm. I. Mm-hmm. We had to schedule it this three years in advance what that was all we did when i saw you at nam i was like in three years or whatever two years from yeah. now i've got a podcast do you want to be on it on this day december 20th yeah. and you were like you're like yeah okay oh, i was like well the world's going to be in the middle of a pandemic so yes yeah. i am i and i i foresaw i've i i uh, foretold that dean got me to quit my day job to be here too today that's so, right. yeah yeah what's your day job um i work at subway do you, oh, you work at Subway now? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Subway, Just in the back, though. Uh, eat flesh. I can't be trusted with the sandwiches. I'm sorry. What's the difference between the back and the front of Subway? Well, the back's where the magic happens. <laughs> I don't think that's yeah. true. Oh, yeah. I don't think yeah. that's true. It's where all the magic happens in the back of Subway. If I'm pretty can't... sure it's just only front employees. Trey, just give us a second, please. Yeah, uh, so there's the front sandwiches, then there's the back of house sandwiches. Oh. Those are like the secret sandwiches. Oh, those yeah. are like the... Maybe the not so sanitary sandwiches. Yeah, it's got like a pizza gate, but uh, subgate. Oh, oh, what are you okay. are drinking? Subway wow. gate. Oh my nice. god! This, this is, is actually just a glass of spit. Here. This Polar. is an excuse for oh. Trey to get wasted. Beautiful. What On bubbly water. <laughs> what time is it over there? <laughs> over, over there and down and in south from yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Over yonder. Um, well, that was it. That's a great interview. Cool. Yeah. So, um, we'll see. Did we get the job? <laughs> no. So no, application I am, to, uh, I'm the manager dog, of Subway, right? <laughs> and, I, and you just revealed all of the deepest secrets of Subway. Well, we just said there's secrets happening. Everyone knows that. Yeah. It's just a magical place. Lots of secrets happening. Nobody Trey, wants... Trey, back of house Xavier. We don't know... We don't want anybody to know where the meat comes from. Oh, yeah. that's true. Also, if I want to adopt a dog, do I talk to you about that, or... <laughs> <laughs> the adoptions go the other way 
for us for Subway. Why do you have hats? We're only accepting. Why do you have so many hats? I like the beanie. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's a little dangerous in, win- in weather. Like during the weather. other live stream that we, we do, that I do, which is normally m- more off the rails than, than the Monday podcast stream, I wear fun hats. Um, okay. But this is... So we're um, not worthy of the funny hats. I well, guess. I you know... No. It's usually a little, a, like a little bit more serious, but that's um, only because that's how it's been. It that mm-hmm. doesn't mean that it has to be that way. Okay. Do you have a request for a hat? Um, well, I like that white, uh, that white cowboy hat in the back, but I don't know. Yeah, I would like you to see. I, like I might just immediately come if you throw that on, though. So. It's up in the closet. Oh, that one's yeah. cool too. Cool hat. How come you don't have any cool hats, Dean? Uh, oh, yeah, that white one. boy. I'm currently, <laughs> currently oh, yeah. retrieving a cool hat. Mambo number fucking 12 oh, or whatever. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah. I like it. It works great with the headphones. Can I get oh, a yeah. hat wobble? Yeah, can you wobble that? Oh, beautiful. Don't. Oh, nice. So Dean's got a goofy hat, too. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, come All on. Right. I can't compete <laughs> with that. I would that's say the that's the biggest true. hat in the history of time. Wow. Yeah, this this is a this is a large hat. Oh, and okay. I don't want to brag or anything. <laughs> okay. What's this podcast about? Well, it's going it's about to hats. be about mm. songwriting pretty soon. Mm. We're I think Let's we put on our songwriting now that we've cap. Got the formalities <laughs> out of the way. Here we go. This house coat is warm. Oh, I'm really horny. Uh, <laughs> I have that effect on people. Are we live yet? <laughs> um. Yes, we are. We we are live, and um, now I'm going to ask the the question that I start every podcast with, um, related to your, you know, to the new album. And the question is, what's this music about? Mm. And I don't want to hear, oh, it's beautifully played. Oh, listen to this blast. No, fuck it. Bring the fucking danger back in the music. <laughs> That's what, a, what is that? That's a joke from your album. Um, oh, that's oh. for our album. I haven't actually listened to it yet. Oh, uh, it's it's not very good. It's not very good. I wouldn't. I they wouldn't put that re- on there. It. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, um, um, probably just breaks up the whole album. The, yeah, the yeah, flow people, of it. People oh. must complain about that a lot. Yeah, they probably don't like it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, it yeah. really takes me out of the experience. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Read a few of those comments. Oh great. yes. Yeah, oh yeah. Those comments. It sucks that you guys have to listen to what people have to say about your album. Like, remember back in the day, you could just like put it out and then like. The only people whose stupid opinion you'd, ha- you'd have to hear would be like, so, like journalists doing reviews. Like yeah, shit sandwich. Yeah. Or like you know? our family being like, don't, uh, <laughs> yeah, shark sandwich. When, when are you gonna pay? Sure. Shit sandwich. Um, Shit sandwich. When are you gonna pay rent? Um, yeah, oh, th- that th- was that was a little clip from uh, Spencer's buddy who really hates our band. Yeah, yeah. I, Is that he, unusual? He's, he's German, so um, so you mm. know, kind of likes to hate it probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know what's funny is that when we said uh, or when Spencer said, "Hey, do you want to be on the album?" He was very excited about that. So <laughs> yeah. I hate your band. Yes, I want to be on your album. <laughs> wants me to yeah. be on their album. Here we no, go. That's something. That is something. Yeah. Okay, so the real yeah. question actually is what was the songwriting process like for this album and how was it different from previous albums, if at all? Uh well, we used um uh what was different? <laughs> well, um, we tried writing like every day oh, uh, my for a little God. while, and uh, that drove everyone fucking crazy. Oh, um, my God. <laughs> so we kind of tried like a bunch of different methods to sort of like get the peak writing performance out of us. Like, you know, we realized five days a week was just crazy, um, which we didn't do before for the last albums. Uh, then we went down to like three days, and that kind of helped us out. Um, so I think we are just trying to figure out how much to get together and how much that would, you know, if it would drive us crazy or if it would be more productive. Uh, that was one thing that was a bit different about the writing. Yeah, it turns out that if you try to make it into a real a real job, then it's no good. Yeah, like two hours of writing and then we're like, okay, fucking nightmare, <laughs> let's get out of here. I, th- I think um, the problem is that when you write five days a week, Monday to Friday, you know, let's say it was kind of varying time. Sometimes it would be in the morning. Sometimes we'd write at like 10 a.m. because that was the only time that everybody could do it, which yeah. is really weird. Um, and then other times you do it at 7.30. But you don't really have much time to like digest the information that you wrote from the day before. And let's say you have like a really good weekend where you write a riff or two. Um, 
you, you waste all you spend all those on Monday and then Tuesday you might you might be like oh how do we link those together again and then Wednesday you're like I got nothing and then you still have you know Wednesday Thursday Friday to fill the time yeah so it's but, a frustrating thing um but also what I'm hearing is that you guys write together all together mostly yeah Unless someone misses a jam and then we make riff names after them, mm-hmm. it's like as brutal as you can go. Mm. Well, I remember you telling me that you guys are very, very serious about your practice rehearsal schedule as a band, um, which makes sense because how to, how else are you going to pull that shit off? Like you can't have, you know, you can't be like, no, it's cool. We'll we'll pull it together on the night. There's one mm. and a two, you know, like you got to fucking do it. But um, you're, it's interesting to hear that you're, you were trying to be as disciplined with the writing and it didn't quite work. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, we, we we definitely were disciplined with the writing. It's just we had to find the right balance of like time off versus time in, in the rehearsal space. So like three days a week was like a good balance for us where we're doing like, you know, I, I don't know if we did Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but I feel like we probably did a couple of days in a row. You know, we used to do like Friday, Saturday, Sunday like way like way back early in the band and then it would give you a lot of time to kind of digest what happened um but now that none of us other than ollie working at subway which uh, after this interview there's no way he's going to keep his job um uh which is probably for the best um, well i quit fuck it oh that's right fuck you, you quit. Jared. that's what you call it um the uh yeah getting everybody together you know, three times a week, like, oh, let's spread it out. And, you know, it, it, it was like two months of doing, two or three months of doing five days a week, and we just fucking hated it. And then we find the right balance. And, and I mean, that's just like anything when we were writing, too. We had a laptop there, and we first started off by like, okay, let's get everything in here, record each tiny riff, all the drums, all the guitar for each riff, and then move it around. And then that became like, absolute hell because it's like now you're just oh, yeah. engineering the song it's like well that's not creative or fun like, yeah we used to we tried to do the like copy paste method um for yeah. riffs and just, or for arranging and then yeah just realized that we were just obsessing over like every little detail and yeah. not really taking a step back so uh, so yeah once we stopped doing that uh writing got smoother i think yeah i mean writing definitely um we had a little bit of extra time, I think maybe a little bit because of the pandemic where we're like, okay, we weren't on tour and then we were at home writing a little bit more, but restrictions made it so we couldn't really get together as much as maybe we wanted to or felt that we had to. Um, but this album, we got way closer to a finished product before hitting the studio than the album before it. Like Relentless Mutation, we wrote in, in like seven or eight months and we were writing stuff until the last day of the studio. But yeah. this album, we were pretty much mostly done a couple of weeks before we were just putting finishing touches on it and yeah, we had longer in the studio too so yeah a lot more pre-pro yeah a lot more pre-pro and uh yeah i think i had almost all the i had all the lyrics done before we went to the studio it was relentless i was writing in the studio yeah um and yeah just a lot more detail on the pre-pro like um we did all the vocals pre-pro oh yeah um and uh yeah and just critiqued the hell out of it before getting in there so yeah and we, we um green peppers uh cucumbers onions uh get the yeah. light mayo on there yeah. honey, we'll just put the oak. cookies in the sandwich if you make them <laughs> they have to sorry am i putting Secret in it menu. i thought i was putting in an order for some way <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you get you have to add cookies to the sandwich right so wait you yeah. guys spent uh seven to eight months on the on relentless mutation and ollie's still writing lyrics in the studio what were you doing the rest of that time bro you well, couldn't get, yeah. get off from Subway? question. Uh, glug, glug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically for that period Making of sense. time, everyone stresses out that I'm not going to finish the lyrics. So whenever I say anything in the group chat, it's just finish the fucking lyrics. Write the fucking lyrics. I would never say that. Um, even when I was done, they were like, write the fuck. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's true, actually. Yeah, we kept yeah. saying that for like a couple months. Yeah. Finish the lyrics. Oh, the finish album's the- done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I have about a month before Whoa. that starts happening again. Oh god! For the next album, yeah, that's Which we're not cool. going to talk about. No, we're not going to talk about that. No. Um, so, so you did extensive pre-pro. At what point do you go from having of uh, like playing the songs as a group? Like you're saying, you guys tried to do this sort of like um, very getting them organized in the computer beforehand and doing it that way, but that didn't work. So then, did you just go back to like? playing them as a band and and uh, putting them together like that and then you hit a point where you you recorded them as as demos for pre-pro 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was that was kind of you, you nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> Next, yes. Next, next question. <laughs> I don't even need you here. Absolutely. I'll, I'll answer all the questions for you. Next so question. I guess the, exactly uh, the actual question is, um, at what What's point do you do question? that with a set with a song? Like, um, like I would say that once we have like a skeleton, which I know we're now in Christmas time, so we don't want to talk about spooky stuff like Halloween stuff. We're done yeah. with Halloween stuff, but once we have like a reindeer <laughs> of a song, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's what. I, yeah, exactly. So uh, once we have like a, a reindeer skeleton of a song, then we, you know, it's like it's like done from from beginning to end, and it flows kind of well. But we know that there's some spots that we want to change or whatever. That's like the point where it's like really exciting because then you're like, okay, cool. Now I can take this home and sit for a couple hours and be like, what, what kind of tiny notes can I change here that no one will ever fucking notice and just waste my life? <laughs> just sitting here or like with the, I don't even know what you do with the lyrics. I go blah, 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 and a gap. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, we need a part here. Okay, blah, 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 and a gap. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, and <clears> yeah, <throat> you're just on thesaurus.com. Just be like, yeah. just jack come. Up. And then, okay. <laughs> how many different words um, can, are there for come? Yeah. <laughs> oh, plenty. <laughs> it's a mouthful. Um, so... <laughs> Yeah, but Fuck. it was it was wow. kind of exciting wow. to have a few parts, like maybe three or four parts that we weren't really sure of going into the studio that we knew Dave would just kind of have to pull out of his ass um, oh. to help us out with. I think it was maybe three, three yeah. or four of those parts that we just couldn't really lock down and just kind of left it to the studio because we knew something cool was going to happen. And some of those parts turned out really, really cool. So yeah, I mean, there's not nothing that the album's good, but if no. you know, there's nothing on the album this time where I'm like, ah, oh, that could have been a bit better. Like everything turned out pretty good. The last album was like, oh, that one transition, maybe we could have spent a bit more time on it. But I think this one, we had more, more time in the studio and before that, you know, we just kind of ironed out a lot of that stuff and making it a perfect album. So yeah. It's a perfect album. It's perfect. It's the perfect uh, album. It won it's, an Oscar actually for the it, best <laughs> album ever made. Yeah, it did. <laughs> um, yeah, that makes that makes sense that it's that they would be perfect because the more time you spend on something, the more perfect it'll become. So you, the next mm. one just just keep going. Just spend ten years on it and don't release it, and then it'll be oh, perfect. Geez. Oh God, that's a sad thought. Uh, oh God, my voice just cracked because of how scary <laughs> that thought is. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because I mean, we we spent eight nine months on Relentless, and we spent two something years on Bleed the Future, so the next one is five years. Yeah, like I mean, like how long is that gonna take? Which is nice that we're able to do that because I think a lot of like oh, real yeah. bands have to like produce new music like every year, and they just turn out garbage. So. Uh, we and, take and four years to turn are, out garbage. And, the, and here's a list of those. Here's bands. a list of those. Bands. Uh, <laughs> um, so, aside from that, th that thing that you were saying about certain little parts that Dave would uh, help with, are, is there anything else during the writing process that you will um, bring in outside uh, help or producers or or something to do that kind of thing? Like, do you? How soon in the process do you involve Dave? Or is it just when you actually show up at the studio? Well, we sent him the demos, but I don't think he listened to them. No, I think he was just kind of like, yeah, I'll check them out. But he was busy, and he knew that it was going to be a headache as soon as he dug into it. Yeah, so. I really don't think he listened to them. You get the vibe where you're like, didn't you know this part was here? Like, <laughs> Which is not saying, it, I mean, that he's a busy dude, so it's not like a, that's like a bonus. If he listened to it before, and it's like, oh, cool. Yeah. But like. But we don't expect him to spend more than. Yeah. allocated time on our I mean you only hired so. him because he's got the same haircut as you guys uh the, and he's he's pretty hunky no. yeah like he's not like Jack but he's in good shape he, like yeah, I, I like hit him one time I was like oh you right like and, a rock. and I fucking <laughs> hit him and I was like ah and you're like yeah oh ah it's like a big solid candy cane that guy <laughs> uh. <laughs> I saw it's a lot of reindeer <laughs> nice. no, I didn't see that um much. but yeah other than that we would just like audience test the the demos to uh like friends and family come back to jam and be like well my mom thinks this part should be like this <laughs> true um, story uh, uh <laughs> so you know or like oh like i'd show it to my brothers and be like oh is this cool and but they like terrible music so it's like no yeah. real frame of reference yeah um but yeah. yeah we we would test it out with uh friends and family and stuff we showed it we showed it to our moms we did yeah and and that that's that footage was documented on youtube yeah oh yes that's true yeah um and they were 
pissed. Well, <laughs> they were pissed. <laughs> I think the emotional response was varied. Um, my mm. mom, I don't think, knew that I was in a band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think my mom knew that I was in a band. She's like, what That's is because this? you're like, ashamed and you tell her that you're a male prostitute because it's less shameful yeah. than being, <laughs> being in the a band. The lot lizard at fucking at Subway parking lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to come up with a pirate rim job joke, but oh, I can't. Yeah, I can't. It's called swabbing so the just... poop deck. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. Is that a seltzer? seltzer? Crack another one there, bud. Seltzer. Yeah, it's a. Uh, nice. But yeah, I mean, your mom. Your mom was just Drug. so. I mean, she was heart. She was heartwarmingly confused. proud. Confused. Yeah. Um, well, that too. Yeah, she was very confused as to what was going on and what she should do. So I just want you to know great. that I love you no matter what, honey. Even if yeah, you I want think, to keep making this music. I think everybody's mom had an issue with how to watch the video. Yeah. Everyone's mom was like... Like, just just watch it and just, whatever. You can say stuff if you want. She was so nervous she wouldn't say anything. So and, she was, and I mean, I edited the vi- footage. I think every single every th- single person's mom was like, okay, so what do I do? Do I press play? <laughs> and fucked up the name of the song for sure. Like, oh. a bunch of times. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what is it? Well, it's because it's gibberish. Bone Horse yeah, but... Terminator? <laughs> Ooh, Bone Horse Terminator. Bone Horse Terminator is actually pretty. That sounds right. like a cool okay. Christmas movie. Yeah. Right. Album number five. Yeah, there you go. Down the drain. Bone Horse Terminator. <laughs> uh, so mm-hmm. let's say, so. like, what's a typical uh, way that, that a song comes together? Like, does it start with a riff? Does it start with a drum beat? Start with a lyric? Like uh, it generally starts with the lyrics. Yeah, I write them all <laughs> yeah, beforehand, yeah, way yeah, in advance. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Very prepared. Yeah. Uh, um, no, I mean it usually starts with a guitar riff. If I'm being honest, and I mean like we got I want guitars to be here. I'm the, you know, I like, play I mean, the lead you know. strings. <laughs> uh, to- Toby and I usually have an idea, and then we'll bring it into the jam spot. Or, and and that's not actually necessarily like that might happen like. 30 or 40 percent of the time we're like oh we wrote a riff and then i mean that's really not saying very much it, it's really just like write a riff just so you have some so- sort of jumping off point and then from there it'll change like crazy so like the initial riff might not be even remotely resembling what actually ends up on the album so it's just uh, any starting point and it just so happens it usually comes from guitar and yeah. um and then you know uh from there we just Add add stuff to it, or somebody says I like everything except for this one note, or whatever. But but what happens a lot of the time is late in the week when you don't have any new riffs, we just sit there. Li- and uh, this is not an exaggeration. We sit there playing random notes until somebody goes, "Oh, what was that?" I, that's not a, that's not yeah. even a joke. That's that's I what happens. May, maybe I don't know if there's any riffs that just were like it showed no. up and this is the riff, and then we just kept it. No. So I no, I doubt it. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it's mostly like Toby getting really mad. Oh, yes. Um, which I would be incredibly frustrating to just you're like, what's the point writing riffs if I just bring them here and everyone just shits on them right away. So that's true. Um, but uh, but yeah, I guess that's just how we start with just one idea that one of these guys will have and then uh, and then just breaking it, breaking it apart. Yeah. And I mean, the the process is frustrating because you can spend I mean, two hours on a riff, and it'll start by being somebody's like, yeah, and we're like, and somebody else might be like, yeah, that's pretty cool, and we're working on it, and two hours later, you go like, does this suck? (laughs) And you're like, yeah, or something that happened a lot lately, the last album was, um, you would write it, and everybody would love it, and then, and then a half hour later, somebody says, "Isn't this the outro to one of the songs on our last album?" And you're like, <laughs> "Fuck!" And then you have to scrap it. So those are the two things that usually. Or the if they make the pirate symbol. Oh yeah. This just means pirate. Like if you're doing a triplet thing. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. And we'll we'll go down a triplet hole for like a few hours and then realize that it's turning piratey and yeah. then uh, have to jump or, ship. Or the walk the plank. The thing that'll get rid of a riff is. Does this sound rocking? Oh yeah, if the it rockin'. sounds rocking, yeah. it's like it's out. Which is good. So like Toby will write something and he'll be stoked on it, and then the uh, how will tell him that it's rocking. And Spencer will start playing like a shitty rock beat <laughs> over top of it to just basically burn him. And be like, "Fuck you, that riff is fucking lame," <laughs> and it just is just incredibly frustrating. I'm sure. Well, <laughs> so, he has no fucking idea. I'm just like, I'm ah, sure, I like yeah. it. I yeah, I approve all riffs. I, I, no, no, you don't. <laughs> no, I don't. You're like, I just want to be Bon Jovi, and these guys are over yeah. here just 
no yeah. no rock a lot so you guys have some working rules within the band like kind of not like unspoken ones but like if it's yeah if it's getting too piratey too too oh, yeah. rocking you yeah, fucking yeah. yeet it sometimes it's just slight things too like it'll be like one note or something that's not working for somebody and then it just derails and it's like all right just fuck it next next thing then yeah um that's yes. frustrating and it's yeah. a it's a democratic process every or like everybody's got to be it's on, actually it's everybody's got to be on board with it yeah, yeah. it's unanimous yeah. it's not if even one democratic. person doesn't like it it's scrapped yeah 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 so um wow yeah. that's yeah. So, uh, the, well no wonder yeah, it I mean, takes a fucking long <laughs> yeah the um the frustrating thing too is like you have a riff let's say jared comes up with a riff not really but when yeah. he does no he does he does write he writes his little bass parts but the yeah. uh he writes he's a great bass player uh, I'm, i'll just put that on right <laughs> <a riff. laughs> no he writes presented to jared. yeah no, no, he, he, he writes great he writes great stuff yeah so if he has a riff and i don't like one of the notes but he does um and then i i'm like you know what i'm not gonna put up yeah, whatever okay let's just go with it we'll see how it goes and we'll go down that kind of road of that riff and then we go to record it i can't remember if i didn't like that riff that one note or not like you get stuck in the fucking moment of it and you're like no i don't like that and six months later you're like oh that riff is cool it's like what the f like why was i not into it before like i don't i think that happens um you know to people you just get stuck in kind of the moment and you know you're three days a week or whatever and you like you start to kind of like oh this this riff sucks because of this and you and then you know months later your interests change slightly or you're i don't know you hear it in a different way and you're like that's actually pretty cool and that's it's a hard yeah and if do. you hear it from like outside of the band perspective and realize like oh that is actually you know a cool sounding riff or like i don't know we'll, we'll think something is going on for way too long and then we'll Oh. take a step back and be like holy fuck that goes by so fast that's a big one for and, us yeah we're so in like in the playing of it that we like this repeats too many times it's like it's five seconds yeah it'll be like five yeah five seconds literally five seconds yeah we're like oh man this is just dragging on like, <laughs> well five seconds <laughs> but someone else like, spire done. time yeah it, well you know, yeah i mean that's it's twice yeah. the notes yeah it, it's it's that's one of the things that's tough about writing that fast is you have to constantly balance it has to be listenable, but it also has to be in, like impressive in some way, or at least we have to think it might be impressive or whatever. And then you have to balance that with it being a cohesive song. Um, and then you you know you have to work at six at Subway, so you have your shift at six, six to nine. Six in the morning. Six in the morning. <laughs> yeah. So you have to balance all that. Who the um, fuck is at you Subway come, at six a.m.? You come to the Eat gym fucking... start reeking like onions. <laughs> yeah. You know, meatball sub not, for breakfast. I mean, reek. Just such a stinky. And they can't just put a little mustard on there. You know, yeah. it's like big fucking glob of mustard. And then, but I, they can't. They can't put like three extra olives on there. I, I can see you not put extra olives on my sandwich. <laughs> this is fucking glass. I can see you, you prick. I, I get that you're mad, but I don't like Subway. I gotta be honest. Um, do you, you know, like Subway? I don't like what they did. <laughs> I don't think that's very cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, their sandwiches, meh. Sure. You know, their their bread kind of it smells like a hospital in there from their bread. And I've I've been into a lot of bakeries, you know, and a lot of hospitals day. apparently. Yeah, yeah, just living on the hills in in France, you know. Um, Is that true? Yeah, and just fresh oh. baked baked bread smell everywhere. Yeah, fresh break, um, break. And Subway bread. doesn't smell like bread, you know. No, it smells like onions. Oh sure. yeah. Yeah. It smells like onions in like a, like a like metal yeah. canisters in the fucking thing it's, just sitting there. It's just, like there's like little donation banks around the city of like your used oxidized onions. You just drop them exactly. in there, and then Subway goes around with a truck and they pick those up, and yeah. that's what they put on your sandwich. Yeah. Subway smell onions. <laughs> so today's video would have been sponsored by Subway. Yeah, it would have been. Yeah, eat fresh. Yeah, oh, they yeah. Didn't hire a fucking pedo. <laughs> that's true. We and then he get didn't this. work there. He, he worked for them. He was a spokesperson. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then they had the audacity uh -huh. after that whole incident yeah. to have a poster that because they just invented feta cheese, I guess. They <laughs> just discovered it. And they and then the fucking poster was we have a feta fetish. I know like, they didn't yeah, they say did. that. Yeah, that was the poster. No, like, oh, you no. can't hire a kid fucker and then and then afterwards be like, anyways, yeah, fetishes for food. Yeah, let's go down that road. <laughs> wow, that's Who was true? at that board meeting fucking sleeping on that one. <laughs> wow, I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, 
feta fetish. I'm actually that's that's really maybe they're poking fun of themselves. May, I don't know. They're like, you know <laughs> what? A, let's let's do a little tongue in cheek. Who knew that Subway would be so edgy? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah crazy. Exactly. They got some young, yeah. new, hip like advertising guy who's like, we got we really got to appeal to these kids. You know, they're really into yeah. freaky shit. Well, these I did days. say I work there we, in yeah. the back. So <laughs> how do we sell? How are we going to sell them these sandwiches? The sandwiches are no good. It's just onions. Yeah. Yeah. We have to make Basically, them onion the sandwich. sandwich. <laughs> That's a, we got to make them want to fuck some the sandwich. Stinky cheese on there. They want to fuck it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so the songwriting Refresh. process yeah, for the last so. album was it was tough to encapsulate <laughs> yeah. all the stuff that we said, but you know, it's uh, yeah. But you guys are very comfortable <laughs> saying to each other that you don't like a, a part that somebody else has mm-hmm. written. You guys aren't that, which I think is better for the song in the end because if you just go, yeah, okay, that's fine, it's great, whatever, and you just let it go, then you wind up with like a bunch of like shit like i, I would spineless I would, music i would <laughs> <laughs> like eh, i guess everybody okay. they're like would, well are we gonna use my riff oh yeah okay and then you just kind of sh- fucking shoehorn it in there yeah. a correction to yours it's not that we're comfortable it's that we're probably too comfortable, too comfortable. telling comfortable. each other that, are, that we insult each other a way too much yeah it's just mean <laughs> yeah it's just a general rudeness yeah um it's it's a uh, yeah, I mean, there, some of the names on the board. So, like Ollie mentioned, when you don't go to jam, then you, you, let's say you miss it because you're, I don't know, out drinking a lot last night, night before. Let's yeah. just say. I'm not going to point or fingers. You or came down with like say, a cough or something. Right. <laughs> so, you, you don't go to jam the next day. So, if you're not there, hey guys, I'm not going to be there tomorrow, then uh, whatever riffs are written the next day uh, get to be named after you. Yeah. Because you're the person who missed the jam, and the worst possible, like as oh. as as D- shitty as in. you can go, digging yeah. in. So some one of them was, uh, and I'm not going to defend myself here, but one of the riffs I wasn't there. I, I got married in 2018. The riff mm-hmm. was called "Baby Cries at His Own as, at His Own Wedding." So that was the name of the riff. Yeah, and the, Baby it was "Cries at Own Wedding." It, it was bright. <laughs> it was bright. I looked in the sun, but I'm not going to defend myself here because that's yeah, another yeah. whole thing he was that we crying. can't. No, exactly. Yeah. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Yeah. Um, I wasn't, but he was. Right. <laughs> uh, you know, there's another one. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. When I started, like, exercising. Yeah. Um, and then I missed a jam. They were, like, uh, not as fat, but still fat, <laughs> dot, 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 and bald. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> but So they wanted to give me a bit of credit for getting less fat, but sure. still fat. True, yeah. Uh, I feel that uh, very deeply because I I am the same. Not as there fat, but still fat. Um, yeah. But yeah. also... What you're telling me is that you have names for all of your riffs. You have every riff. Oh, every yeah. riff has Which a name. You can't say some of them. On One here. of the riffs is just called 40 Fs. It's just, <laughs> 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 and then the riff after that is. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, okay, you play <laughs> <laughs> for two and a half, and then <laughs> for half a one, and then go back to. <laughs> yeah. Just that's not a joke. Craziness. That's not a joke. Yeah. Oh, I, and then we had a riff that was just I called "Fortunately Dog." You. What is it? Yeah. Picture of a dog. Yeah, Toby, so Toby just, had to Toby drop. Because yeah. Toby's uh, has an art degree. So oh my god, Toby's art, an art is major. Amazing. Yeah. Oh my goodness, it's real. He did all the album covers, all the yeah, all the lyrics. Yeah, all the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> he painted all the lyrics. He That's true. Lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Um, you don't have liner yeah. notes. It's just paintings. Yeah. Yes. The oh, yeah the level. um the the naming the riffs is just as important as writing the riffs a lot of the time because you have to be able to be like okay so now we're gonna play. Cyploptic, and then we're gonna play Ball of Possession, and then we're gonna, you know, like all those kind of, and and you you start to build like this shorthand for whatever riff, because otherwise it's like, yeah, you just get lost. You know that diminished riff? It's like what the fuck? Like you know, there's no <laughs> way to remember it. Yeah, yeah, there's no way to remember it. Um, so uh, and we've been doing that since the absolute beginning of the band, as far as I know. Like I mean, since. Like, I think when I first started jamming with Spencer, when it was not even called Archspire, I think we were already doing that then, um, back when one of, their, one of our songs was called Machine Driven Tension. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. It's like mechanic metal. Yeah. And, and the lyrics were like, are, are, uh, oh, my God. Oh. Not, yeah. Dean, Dean wrote those lyrics. I did. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that was before we had Toby. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think ever since the beginning, we've been writing on a little whiteboard or whatever, and just dumb names. And then and then eventually, at some point, it, it, you know, the not being there during jam came in, and then 
at some point, if you're even a second late, everybody in the room screams at you, and then creates a lot of tension. There was a good four years where we couldn't say numbers to each other. Oh yeah, um, couldn't say numbers. That's going no down numbers. the whole road. No, yeah, yeah, I don't. We don't have time to talk about that no. here. We could not say a number to each other. Couldn't tell each yeah. other the time. Never. You yeah. couldn't do it. Um, and that yeah, there's there's also the whole chicken blood thing. That is a that is a big yeah. Chicken blood is a big part of our writing process. That's um, true. We could just, explain that. We could explain that. Yeah. So if you make fun of someone, or if they show any signs of being defensive at all, <laughs> um, then you just rip into them <laughs> like way more, uh, and it's called chicken blood. That's a great so, description of it. Yeah. Yeah. So and it's like smelling it's chicken blood because it's like sharks in the water. They smell blood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know where the chicken I don't know where came the chicken, from, yeah. but it's like, you. oh, it's chicken blood in the egg water. That's it. So it's like yeah. sharks in the, in, the, in the water, but it's chicken blood in the egg water. So if you smell a bit of chicken blood in the yeah. egg water, then you just go at it like chickens, I guess. And I, guess, <laughs> I guess, I don't know. Yeah, the explanation sort of kind of fell apart near the end. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, like, there's also now a thing called blood baiting where you like try to set a blood trap for someone. So you're like, you'll, yeah, you'll say something to kind of get, get under their yeah. skin. And if you, if yeah. you detect it at all. Yeah. It's yeah. like, if you ever say Meshuggah sucks around Toby, it's like, oh, oh yeah. he starts trying to defend it. Oh, and like, oh. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter if you like that man or not. Just say Meshuggah oh. sucks. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's fucking yeah, yeah, there you go. And then everyone makes fun of you, makes chicken sounds. Is this what you want from the podcast? Yeah. Is this what you want? We're talking about this chicken. is a hundred percent what I want. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, so I, it's kind of depressing to think about how many hours added up. We're just trying to name riffs oh, and not actually man. writing anything. So like many in that span of whatever, four years, uh, like could have been, could have like been a, more, a quarter of the time writing. Yeah. Maybe just could have been more efficient. Like sitting there being like, fuck, what are we going to call it? Yeah. We could just go with like riff a. Yeah. No, oh, rock and roll dog show or whatever. <laughs> like just like random shit. Like, no, that's stupid. And then we'd argue about just. Yeah, whether it should be called like rock and roll, uh, that's a random one, but but yeah, like <laughs> like it fucking matters. Like we go down this road, like it really matters what we're gonna name it. Well, yeah, it's uh, it's really interesting hearing the the different like levels of involvement from the members of bands. Uh, I mean, this is only the third episode of the podcast, but it's been a combination the so far. of the best one so far, for sure. Yeah, like we so had, yeah. um, the first one was uh, was Matt Hafey, and they're, they do it a very similar way with Trivium, where they, they write the songs all together. And then I, uh, then we had Brody on from Rivers of Nile, and, and he, uh, he does sort of the bulk of this structuring of the songs just kind of by himself. Um, and he likes to be very comfortable. He was saying, you know, he's got his little setup and, and everything. And it's a lot of like experimentation with synths and shit like that. And, and then there's you guys like who have this complex, uh, culture and like a, a, a whole band set of rules and, and ways of going about things. You're like the fucking lost boys of Peter Pan, started a you know a cult in the oh, woods not the cool and, lost boys and you like and there's no adults allowed um yeah. and um i mean it's whatever fucking works really i don't you guys does it work what comes out <laughs> is is pretty fucking over the top yeah um i mean we all got to quit our jobs at subway so yeah at this point you yeah know, it's really working out i don't really yeah well. i don't know if we could try a different style of writing no. I don't think we would try that. No. Other bands write on tour. It's like, how the fuck do you do that? Yeah. How would you write Or they on just tour? like jam, which oh, is really hilarious. That's, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that, I don't think we've ever just jammed. Yeah, I mean, even in the jam store, we have, everybody's on in-ears and we're writing to a click track and we can hear each other really well. Jamming that way would be, I mean, awful. It's hard. yeah. It would be awful, for one. I mean, you're trying to play it like... However, like 350 BPM is like, what the, f- like, what yeah. are you going to be able to hear? Oh, I'll just groove into this yeah. next part <laughs> yeah. and just follow along and see how that yeah. sounds. It's, yeah, it really, it has to start at one spot and then build from there. And that just generally starts with, with the guitar. Um, there were some examples on Relentless and maybe even on this album where we started with a vocal idea. Like for Relentless, we started with, uh, we were like, let's rip off Tech 9. So we did that and we ripped it off for the beginning of Callum's Will Animate. And that, yeah. that song is like, oh, we'll start that song with this vocal idea. Um, and so that happens. Um, and for some, some bridges, we'll yeah. just be like, okay, yep. Yep. I'll come up with a vocal pattern for, for a bridge and we'll start there. What uh, if, yeah. if we get hard up, like if we're like, okay, nothing's coming out right now. So we'll be like, all right, Jared, what about you? Or like put the spotlight on Jared or put the spotlight on me. And we're like, okay, come up with some fucking pattern. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's cool. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's fine. <laughs> At what it's point, fine. I guess, how do you decide the BPMs? Because that's a big, big deal for you guys. Like, you're playing this outrageously tacky shit. Like, that's kind of the, not the point, but it's the w- one of the features of the band. It's the gimmick. It's it's yeah. the gimmick. So yeah. at what point as you're as you're going, do you decide on the final BPM for something? Do you guys wind up pushing it up as you go, like after you've practiced the part a bit at all? Take a song and bump it up ten, fifteen BPM, or some, or take it down a bit so that it's playable. I've done that, I think, Emily. Yeah, I think I think what it really comes down to is like <clears throat> um, how many hits of his little sticks onto those little. Little things can Spencer do, like his little, this little weak little Pitter wrist, patter. the line in the circle. Yeah, so it's like connecting. if he's if he's got like a drum beat idea or something like that, and he's like, I can play this at this tempo and no faster. Then we say, okay, well, let's write at that tempo. Yeah, that's kind of a starting point. Also, like yeah. if we we're starting a new song, we'll look at the other BPMs for the other songs, and they have to be all different. Yeah. Um, I don't know why, because I can't tell the fucking difference. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Spencer will be like, okay, let's try writing in this in this range. Uh, and then we'll just figure out, like, riffs at 320, whatever. And uh, You know what's weird is that it should never... It's, it had, like, I would say maybe people might expect, like, okay, we're four albums in now. Maybe it's gotten easier to write. And it really... I don't think it has. No. Uh, so many aspects of it are, are just as difficult as it was, you yeah. know on our second album or whatever. Like we might've gotten better at like, we might have more like tools on how to kind of record demos and make things, you know, visualize it a little bit more or whatever, but we're not faster. If anything, we're slower. Yeah. And, and I mean, I think the main difficulty is just to not repeat, you know, ideas from, from previous songs. So yeah. that's where most of the uh, tension goes to be like, okay, this can't sound exact. I mean, I know to some people it all sounds exactly the same, but um, sure. But yeah, that's something that gets harder, I guess, as you go, naturally, to try to like make sure it sounds original and doesn't sound like any of the other songs. Yeah. Um, but still sounds like us. So, uh, yeah, I guess it does get harder. It's fucking yeah. It's very frustrating. Yeah. What was the but. hardest song on the album to write? Do you think song song three? Song three was. Well, um, abandon the linear. That ooh, song it was, oh, has yeah. has a riff called the cursed riff. Yeah, and I, I wrote that. The intro. I wrote that riff in 2017, I think, maybe 2018, and we tried to put it into songs five times, and it never fucking worked. Every time we're like, ah, it do- doesn't work, and so we got pretty close to the end of our writing process, and we saw, we thought, okay, so either what we do is we call it a really short album, we do seven songs, and <clears throat> we have like let's say two months left we do seven songs and we spend the next two months really refining everything absolutely perfectly. Um, or we um, write a new song in two months, which is a, a tough for us to do. And, and so of course, then we were like, okay, well let's, let's put in the cursed riff, the fucking hardest riff to put in anything. Cause that was all we really had at that point. And, uh, and, it, and it worked. I mean, that song turned out pretty cool. Um, but that was, that was, that riff made it the hardest song I think to write. In my opinion, but yeah, just make that fit. Yeah, just because of like the history <clears throat> of that riff, <clears throat> it was quite difficult. But um, but yeah, I mean, like the other the other songs. Let's say "Reverie in the Onyx" was like the first one that we wrote, and I think that that came together really nicely right away. And then for a while, I was like, I don't know. I think this is my favorite song, and then I was like, I don't like it as much anymore. And then at the end, it's like, oh no, it's really cool. And then when the album came, I was like, actually, so it like it's sort of. It comes and goes. Like the perspective changes so much. I think that was the first riff that we wrote for the for this album, right? Well, uh, that main riff. Rever- yeah. In Reverie. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Kind of sounds a bit different than anything else. On the yeah, album. yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. And then I think we took a, a writing break after that song, didn't we? Uh, we had that one song, or most I of that think song. So. Um, so yeah. Kind of stands out. We did have to take some breaks uh, to go on tour and stuff. Um, because we 2018 was the busiest year we ever had for touring. We were gone for like six or eight months or something like that. Mm-hmm. Did like Australia, New Zealand, Japan, U.S. twice, Europe twice, Canada. Like we were gone like most of the year, and so. And then 2020. Oh my goodness! Crazy tours. Oh fuck! We were gone <laughs> the entire time. Oh man! Don't even remember it. Yeah. It's do all you, blur. Do you guys have um any 
specific ways that you go about structuring the songs? Anything that you do, I don't know, often or, or so, obviously you're not using super traditional song structures in general, but how do you, how do you go about it? Mm, we uh, pretty much just wing it every fucking time. And one thing that we try to do, we did for a long time, like, okay, well, let's, let's start the song with the same riff that we end the song with. Okay, so that's cool. But then you do that enough times, you're like, okay, well, maybe we shouldn't do that again. Um, or uh, in this one, we, we tried to have the song title repeated a lot in the songs. But when you're playing that fast, you're like, okay, repeat it a bunch of times. Yeah, everything seems like it's to us played a bunch of times in a row. But to the listener, they're like, wait, what, what was that? Was that it? Like, I don't so. No, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we did try to have more of like a like at least choruses, maybe not first chorus, but a yeah. lot more choruses. Yeah. Um. But yeah, and it, to us, it was like, oh yeah, this is like a lot catchier. But then yeah, you listen to it, and you're like, okay, it's still, yeah, it goes by so quick that it's hard to pick out choruses maybe for some people. But uh, it's weird how different you hear your own music. Like, I mean, I'll hear like let's say if you put on uh, a live video of us playing, I'll be like, wow, are we playing this music way faster? But it's like, no, it's to a click track, so no. If you just hear it in different context, even though we wrote it, it's like something, it's just, it, it's it's really weird. Because the actual recording, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I know all the parts. It sounds like it kind of makes sense. But if you just change it a bit, it's like, what the fuck? What are we doing? Like, this is, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird thing to play that fast, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah, and still try to have some kind of catchiness to it. Hey, it pays for our pirate hats. You know, it really puts a pirate hat on our head. Yeah, it pays the bills. Keeps these what kids hat indoor living bill. indoors in their pirate hats. This is a hat pun. A ha- oh, I thought like a brim, like a bill, a, du- uh, a yeah. duck bill. It, yeah. <laughs> Never mind. It pays the bills. I like that joke. Okay. I like it because now it doesn't make any sense. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Next question. I, th- <laughs> I mean, I think for death metal, you guys. Well, I, I mean, I think you guys have hooky songs in general, even in like in spite of going a bajillion miles an hour. But even hooky for death metal, and then still hooky just in general. So that's that's good. That's a. I mean, well, I think it's good. Some you know. A lot of Thank a lot you. of metal fans don't <laughs> don't like that. They're like, no, I want it to be everything to be completely different. But it's memorable, you know. It's not just. Well, I, there's something that you got to keep in mind is, and and the fans of the band, like, I mean, the only reason why we can keep doing this as a full time thing is because we have awesome fans and they buy shirts and they buy albums and stuff. But I mean, oftentimes, what a fan wants of the band is not actually what they would want. So, like, oh yeah, th- this is what I want. It's like, well. Yeah, I mean, you might say let's have the whole song blasting the entire time, no breaks, but it's like that oh, that wouldn't sound good, you know. Yeah. And we couldn't even do it anyway because we got you know, yeah. what's his name? So uh, <laughs> because he's a human being and he needs to take breaks, which I totally understand. Um, it's ridiculous. It's, <laughs> it doesn't mean I'm not mad about it. <laughs> I am mad about it. But uh, also, I mean, listening to like it's, I think it's okay to admit that uh, you have an audience and that they like certain things and to kind of use that when you're writing to be like, okay, what would a crowd like to hear? Yeah. Um, Instead of just being like, fuck you, we do exactly what we want. And then you may or may not like it. You know, we, we don't switch directions and go on some, you know, completely different sound. Yeah. um, To just to alienate, you know, fans. (laughs) Like we're not going to, and the bands that do do that, that. uh, here's a list of the bands (laughs) that do that, that we find that do that. We'll put it in the description. Archer, uh, um. yeah. <laughs> that's that's really interesting because in in that sense there kind of is a uh, a a sixth person involved or I guess a seventh if we count Dave um, who didn't listen to the the pre pro um, you know so like you're diff. you're you've got this idea of your audience <laughs> and what they'll like and you're 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 kind of thinking about or at least to some degree you're thinking about what they would maybe want or what's going to work for them even if they don't know what they want you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we actually used to have, ever since the beginning of the band, um, we would have our friends come to the jam spot and hang out with us and sit there for hours listening to our music. And there's a couple of points where, um, you remember when Dave, our buddy Dave came to the jam spot, not Dave Otero, but a different guy. 
um, came to the Jam Squad and we were writing our second album and we were writing um, Seven Crowns. Yeah. And he's like, oh, that outro is really cool. You should repeat it. And we're like, oh, really? Yeah, kind of just whatever. Like, no, it's a really cool part. And we repeated it and it's like, oh, that was a good idea. Like, that was a great idea. Yeah. Um, not going to pay him any money for that, <laughs> but... No. Thanks for the idea, asshole. You gotta, um, you gotta, you know, negotiate those points on the back end, on in the moment. Otherwise, in the back of, su- know, the back of subway, back of subway, yeah. back of subway. <laughs> that all gets know. ironed out. In see the back what can, of yeah, there. exactly, yeah. See what you see, what you can fit inside. Never mind, never mind. <laughs> well, never mind. I, I, something that you said about, um, yeah, about Spencer being human, about you guys being human, and only being able to do X, you know, like BPM or whatever. But in reality, like. That's kind of what makes it so cool is that you guys aren't robots. Like the reason that I'd rather listen to you rather than the like AI, ge- like procedurally generated version of you that's out there on the on the internet now um, yeah. is like is because you're not robots. You know what I mean? Like it's only c- like sick that you can play like this because you're people. Right. So like those little breaks and stuff that you're talking about, like en- sort of engineering these these like human uh, necessity, like uh, break points in your song or whatever. To me, that's like that's like, oh, shit. Like you can you see the king bleed or whatever. Like, or, or what is it? Only, even a god can bleed that thing. Like <laughs> to me, that's <laughs> that's great. <laughs> like you're not oh. blasting the whole time. That's it's better. It's like more fucking well, real to me, I guess. It helps us kind of just naturally write in dynamic just based on our ability, you know, or lack yeah. of ability. So it's like, okay, we need to drop out here. So that's where the chill parts come in. And because it is, you know, we want to be able to play all the songs live. Um, so yeah, it just sort of helps us naturally write in dynamic by just being like, hey, we can't, we would love to play this part again, but we just can't physically do it. So. You know, which it just maybe works out for the best. I, th- I think that applies to our album lengths as well. We we sort of apply the same thought process to, <clears throat> like we have we have really short albums because we don't want to overstay our welcome with any of this stuff. So if even if you're like the biggest technical death metal fan, listening to like an hour of this genre is probably going to be kind of tough. You know, like unless yeah. you're really tricky when it comes to certain things, like it'll be. I mean, even there'll be the, some filler. Yeah, Probably. there'll be some filler, or there's going to be like a drop in momentum um, that maybe isn't for the best or whatever. So we like to write albums that are like 31 minutes long, and and when you see people being like, "Oh, why didn't you write a longer album? I want more songs." It's like that's the best kind of thing that you can ask for, because if you never write as much as people think that they want from you, then they're always going to want more, and they're just going to be a better, you know, like a, a bigger fan of the band or whatever. So. Yeah. Um, plus, we couldn't write more music if we tried. It just <laughs> takes time. It takes so much time that it's just like not. And there's something sad about like if you really do like a band and you go see them live and they play like a, just a little too long. Yeah. Which, which I found happens to a lot of my favorite bands. I'll go watch yes. them and be like, you know, an hour and 10 minutes in and you're like, all right. Like, yeah, you know, that's tough, though, because when you get to like a like a legacy band, like a band that's been around for uh, like 20, 25 years. And, and if you're quite successful, you're going to have so many songs that people want to hear. And you're kind of in, you're kind of stuck. Somebody spends their hard earned money to come, come see you at some big show and you got to play all the songs they want you, they want you to play. Otherwise they're going to be like, oh man, this band, they don't like playing their old stuff anymore or whatever. It's like, so you're kind of, it's tough. It's a tough position to be in. Um, we'll never get to that point. Yeah. We're we just, don't <laughs> ever have to worry about that. But, no. <laughs> yeah. We won't get to just, an evening with Arch Spire where it's three hours of yeah. the hits. We'll just play our little yeah. songs and get off the stage. Yeah. Um, sort of in the same uh, vein of because you're pushing the envelope of how fast you can play the technical aspects of it, you guys always got to be way up on your shit. Like you can't, there's no, there's no room for slacking off for missing a bunch of rehearsals or not practicing enough because you literally won't be able to, to do it. Um, and then that's sort of dictating a lot of things about how the strong songs wind up being structured. It sounds like, um, I remember talking to Spencer at length, um, about how he, how he sort of orchestrates his parts a lot to consider resting certain muscle groups and like certain ways of, Spencer of doing about things. His muscles? He talked no about way. his muscles. What? Yeah. And <laughs> our Spencer. Yeah. 
and you could see them. You could see them. The same Spencer. (laughs) Oh, I'm starting to sense that maybe. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So I I guess in this, in the same sense, you guys are playing them as a band in the rehearsal spot, and and putting them together all together and having to play through them rather than just sitting at your computer programming shit. Um, makes the Figuring most out sense. How to play it later. Yeah, exactly. Like you're not we, gonna. We play over a lot of backing tracks, and that oh, means yeah. you just can't. You tell. Well, like a like they a, just prop up my wasted <laughs> body and just run <laughs> your, fucking <laughs> your wasted body. <laughs> we can at all in front of house. Yeah. One of the things at all I like. It. We don't play to each other on stage. We play to stem, so we can't hear each other. Yes, so we just play totally to like a it. mixed a mixed version, whatever album mix that we want on our phones or whatever. Um, which is a good. Okay, so it's good. Right, because then you can uh, then you can really dial in exactly what you want to hear. There's no differences every night, but it also means that no one else can in the band can hear you when you fuck up. <laughs> so it is a good thing, but also like I wonder what we would be like if we could hear each other. If we would be like, "Wow, you blew that guitar solo last night." <laughs> like I did. Uh, oops, but but it helps not stress out after the show, like because you're just true. like, okay, I fucked that part up. Yeah. But if I think that if we were all hearing each other, it would probably af- affect us a lot more afterwards. Be like, oh, like we as a group fucked up. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, like I'll sometimes you can go like you know twenty seconds into a song before realizing that someone's wireless died or something. Yeah. Um, which which I think is is good because then you just keep keep the song going, and I think that that's. That's uh, more important. It's more important yeah. than just train wrecking. Well, when you yeah. guys when you guys play, when I'm there, I'm not watching you anyways. I'm getting caught up on Seinfeld, so um, you can probably oh, get as much blown as in the bathroom because you're such a stud. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Only when um, your dad yeah. comes along on tour. <laughs> uh, nice. <laughs> uh, your dad came to the show. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah. Oh, well, good. Oh, that's yeah. Nice. Just to just to blow people in the oh, bathroom. Oh, okay. Um, he also works at Subway. Yeah. <laughs> no, see that would, from a long you would have line to know who he was. Artists for him to, Artisans. to invite him. Artisans. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh Dean, you've got your your series of uh Dean attempts to learn um songs. Uh-huh. Yeah. On your channel that. and that's that's pretty fun to watch. Oh, thanks. Um so you're you're learning you know so- guitar parts, songs and and stuff, but it's mostly performance based but like you're um it's cool to see that you you're continuing to learn as you go you're not just you know stagnating in in what you've been doing forever and um has have any of you guys in the band like um taken the same approach to learning uh songwriting or or theory or any any sort of not formal but more structured specific analysis of songwriting or, or anything like that studied in any way other than just fucking going for it. Well, I mean, Jared's got his little piece of paper. Yeah. Jared oh, does has he? some jazz degree that yeah. he also got from Subway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, Subway fucking <laughs> Academy of Music. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. Um, I don't think that, uh, you know, like I, I'll listen to like speed rap stuff, yeah. and uh, and to try to find inspiration for patterns, um, and kind of go down that road. So using other genres to try to get ideas rather than just listening to other tech death, um, you know. Or I don't know. Like I'll do that for for writing lyrics. Like, and people won't know because it's such a different genre. Like, um, like Drain of Incarnation was like based on Wave of Mutilation by the Pixies because. I like that name and I like that song and I was like, oh, I want to like, so it's kind of used that as like an uh, inspiration for the title anyways, um, just to get an idea to start like running off of. So yeah, ripping off people from other genres uh, is great because people that are generally just listen to Tech Death don't really know about Pixies so uh, or listen to it. So you can... Uh, yeah, you can rip them off and nobody knows. Sorry. Well, oh, you just adjusted your camera oh. and now everything's all tilted. Oh, no. Going on. Well, I just realized that I'm in like the the right 10% of the camera angle for you. And yeah. oh, no, it's oh, getting worse go. now rather than better. Okay, oh, my well, goodness. anyway, no just look inside of my. Move. This has gotten so much worse. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The cable the jackass, that's, that, that is holding the, uh, the camera. Do you work at a hat store? Like, what <laughs> is this? I might as well. Where are you? Are you at like an office? Are you at your 
This your is my this is my studio. Welcome. So you, is this here your house? Yes, it's the garage. Oh, I have a piece of tape right here. I'm gonna fix this problem. Perfect. Just go right over the camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have a button. Oh, you're, you're not going to be able to hear it, but I have a little song, hashtag pro stream, and it's playing right now. Um, there, that's better. Okay. <laughs> I can't hear it. <laughs> no, you can't hear it, but it, you'll see it You'll see it in the playback. Um, oh, so, man. Yeah, we're um, going to get off and immediately watch this. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't. Um, I don't re- recommend that anybody watch it, especially not the sure. 200 people who are watching right now. Hi. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, Hi. Um, <laughs> So you're that's good uh so you're yeah you're pulling from other other kinds of stuff um anything anything else that you're pull, um pulling from in during this specific album writing sequence anything you were listening to that influenced the direction of it or anything mm. I mean we we put a, a bunch more ripped off classical music in there so oh, we've yeah. ripped Thanks. off uh, Mozart ripped off Bach uh, a lot all the time uh some Beethoven just like really Cause that's like a whole treasure trove of just stuff you could rip off, and you got n- you get no trouble to do it. That's so that's public great. domain. Because they're dead. Yeah, yeah, because they're yeah. dead. Um, but the uh, I mean, you did some more like trap kind of stuff in this, didn't you? Yeah, a little bit. That's like sort this. of like the did it did it did it that kind of vocal. Yeah, a bit more like some kind of trap patterns from listening to like Juicy J and shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and, then... and you you definitely have like more. Like in the song Abandoned Linear, you have a lot more. There's some real rap flows in there. Like really, I don't know. They've yeah. got some those cool kind of gaps. Um, yeah, we tried to write that up. And I think Dave helped with that, even though he doesn't listen to rap. Yeah. Um, but just kind of naturally knew where I was kind of going with it. And uh, and that I wanted it to sound, you know, like rap. And uh, kind of he caught on to that and helped out a lot with that. With that. I think, yeah, that song is most rap inspired. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, like, I don't know, just ma- basically to get like ideas like Reverie on the Onyx Landing is a ripoff of Sleeping on the Blacktop by Coulter Wall. <laughs> uh, I didn't know any of this. Reverie is like sleeping and then on the blacktop and the Onyx. Is, yeah. So Reverie on the Onyx. Oh. Is, that's one of my favorite songs. Word it's play. Coulter Wall. Uh, yeah. Sleeping on the Blacktop. Um, but it was just because I wanted like a name for inspiration and I already had the story idea. And I was like, oh, that's cool to twist that around. And uh, again, just rip off. You know, another I, I think that's cool. I mean, that's the kind of shit that, you know, it, like even for like doing videos or whatever, like, I mean, because Ollie and I did uh, do a show called Good Morning Handsome or a cooking show. I mean, the the show is not, it's not like a unique, it's by not like, any means. It's not like and no one's yeah. ever done a cooking show. Yeah. You know, so we're just like, oh, okay, we'll just do it because cooking shows are funny. And so there you go. And I mean, like, this guy's good uh, that. And I don't I mean, chop my fingers off. Right. Um, and the uh, you know the same thing with the music. You like what you like, and so you're like, okay, well, I'll just take from all your inspirations. And if you do it like honestly, then I think it's cool. Rather than trying to be like, I need to be original with everything. It's like good fucking luck. They, yeah. You're never gonna do it. You yeah. can't, can't reinvent the wheel out. every time. Yeah, yeah. and, and I mean, I'm not gonna listen to like Cannibal Corpse to get inspiration because I just, I mean, they're amazing, obviously. But yeah, I uh, I don't think you can do an interview without mentioning them, maybe. Or corpse grinder, at least we almost um, did, though. <laughs> I almost did, yeah, but I can't. Um, but yeah, I think that it's kind of. Uh, I think get more out of it to going outside of your genre for inspiration. Yeah, like, yeah, like classical, you know, classical music. Uh, we even had a conversation for a little while that we wanted to try and do, adding like a synthwave element to the album. Yeah, we did and... want to do that because we were doing. Uh, Toby is writing like synthwave interludes. Yeah, like Carpenter Brut kind of style shit and. Oh, yeah, I would like to have some of that on worked into an album somehow. Yeah, um, I mean that may be kind of cool, you know. And, and it's like st- okay, some stuff that we like, and incorporate it, and it's like see how it works. I mean, if like I said, if you do it from like an honest place where you're not like, oh, I'm going to steal this because, you know, I'm not going to steal this note for note thing. You're just like, okay, I like this idea, and now let's see how we can apply the stuff that we know about writing, you know, uh, full band music to to this other kind of thing and add that in and, and, you know, because we like it and we're not trying to do it because we're trying to make money. It's like, no, there's just a cool idea. Um, so the same, I think that was a lot to do with how we, uh, you know, initially started the band really fast, really extreme music with rap death metal vocals. It's like, okay, well we like really extreme death metal. We like rap, put them together. There you go. 
So, and that's all that everyone in the band can pretty much agree on. Yes, style-wise. <laughs> that was the yeah. last time you guys agreed on anything at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think I think the only album that all of us like is Rust in Peace. Yeah, that's but true. Med- yeah, we Medina. talked about if we'd ever do a cover. Yeah, what the fuck we would do? I actually recorded half that song in, uh, in on eight string. Oh yeah, at home. What, what, was it Holy Wars? Oh uh, no, uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Holy Wars. Yeah. Yeah, that would I'd be. And I was like, cover that song. okay, this is kind of cool, but no, we didn't do it. We didn't do it. We're yeah. too lazy. Yeah. Seems like a good like you've sneakily made death metal fans listen to rap music, whether or not they liked it. Mm-hmm. Or if you go to a show. Uh, one of our shows um, coming up, Tech Trek 5, uh, April to May in the U.S. and Canada. Um, tickets are on sale now. Uh, if you go to one of our shows, then you'll hear a rap between the bands, and that pisses off a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Promoters don't like that either. Nope. Because no. if you're not playing death in between bands, then like the band death, then yeah. you're fucking up. Yeah, exactly. Apparently. Yeah. So we're like, hey, you know what? People will leave, apparently. They'll spend money on tickets. And then if they hear a song they don't really like between bands, they're just going to leave. Yeah. <laughs> it's insane. Like, yeah. Who fucking thinks that? Yeah. So the. I uh, wish that metal fans weren't uh, weren't like that. Well, I, I don't. Wish I, yeah. I weren't. don't think that they are necessarily. It's just like, it's, you know, a couple you get, bad apples. You get a yeah. few people <laughs> that are like, ah, you know, but it's just funny because, okay, so. Uh, in between these really loud death metal bands, what should we play to sort of cleanse the palate? How about really loud death metal? <laughs> it's like, what are you thinking? Like, what is yeah. this? What is the thought process here? How are you creating a party? Like, this party sucks now because it's just so much of this one thing. So it's like, give the audience a break. You know, they're hanging out. Yeah. They want to. They want to chill out, and you know. So when you guys kinda, do so we'll... Tech Trek Nine, can it be Tech Nine Tech Trek? Can you Anything bring tech we can nine? do to do a Tech Nine, yes, we'll do. I would pay uh, such good yeah. money Anything to see you guys play with we can yeah, do. Just point at anything in the room. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You okay. can have it. Yeah. So, um, Please don't do that. It's at my house. Don't yeah, yeah. let him do that. I've got expensive cameras here. Don't let him fuck them. <laughs> There's a bunch of Christmas gifts here. That's true. Come yeah. all over them. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you, um, so I think, I think it's interesting that you talked about like ripping off or you know Thanks. taking taking inspiration from bands or artists and and hip hop especially has this sort of history of of sampling you know and th- it's it's a completely different attitude towards um taking from like re- directly quoting the source you know like there wasn't for a long time before there was a, a a really strong legal element to sampling somebody. You know, hip hop came from just sampling these records, finding like the Amen break or whatever, like Amen break. What, what do you say? A- amen, Amen. I guess it depends on what church you didn't attend. Um, but, <laughs> but, but you know, like stuff like that. Amish? Using yeah. <laughs> yeah, Amish, the Amish yeah. break. Um, but um, metal has sort of this very opposite view of it. It's like, it has to be 100% original all the time. Like, you have to fucking invent a new genre for every band, and, like, they have to be completely original, which is actually fucking silly, because nobody really, really does that. It's not like you invented new notes or some shit, but no. it's interesting yeah, to hear you if guys you did, in the approach. If you did invent new notes, they would sound bad. <laughs> they would sound bad. Yeah. Those ones would sound. Those notes would sound bad. Yeah. So microtonal um, music is not not fun to listen to. It's not enjoyable. Ollie is being very rude right now. He had a phone yeah. call and his phone is on vibrate. Yeah. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Yeah. Get so the, can we start this whole thing again? The manager at Subway yeah, so, just fucking going off. <laughs> Let's roll to the beginning. To be, um, so to be what is this music right about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Say the beginning thing again. <laughs> yeah, I mean that sample thing came from us wanting to rip off rap albums like i mean tech nine does that a lot so it's yeah like, the yeah. skits like the yeah so we're old, like old school rap skits yeah and actually we have something coming out uh, i think tomorrow that is that is actually oh yeah that the names it's named after that uh it's a very very cool project that we've been working on for uh two years since august 2019 um Damn. and that's coming out tomorrow i believe and so it's uh, named after that. I, I think it'll it'll be more apparent what the fuck that is tomorrow. So this is a terrible Great. announcement for us. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. There's something happening tomorrow. Something happens tomorrow. Big things Tomorrow's coming soon. 
that we're inside of. We're yeah. in it. We're, we're in it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, we want to rip off rappers. And, and what's funny is that, um, you know, we put it in because we really liked it. Turns out the audience doesn't really like it. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. I, I get lots of flack, which is great. Yeah. And, and that's, and that's kind of fun for us. So like, oh, they, you know, I've seen people, it really ruins the flow of the album. It's like, that's pretty sweet. It's kind of sweet to have people <laughs> being mad about that. It's like, yeah. well, it's chicken blood. That, exactly. See? That's exactly what that is. Oh, Metalheads being like, oh, he looks like or acts like a rapper or sounds like a rapper. That's chicken blood for that. And the, and the best reply to that that I've seen you put on is. I, I am a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, this guy is like, sounds like a wigger rapper. I'm like, well, I, I am a rapper. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, all you did was just like aptly that. describe me accurately. Yeah. Yeah. It's so funny. Yeah. So that yeah, those comments. Oh, I mean, yeah. Does he think he's a rapper? I am a rapper. Yeah, well, that's literally, that's literally what I am. I just... <laughs> the skits thing is funny because you guys don't have skits on the album, but when you play live in between every song, it's basically Hilari- hilarious. Oh, all yeah. stand up comedy. Yeah, hilarious. And it's comedy. kind of you that same thing. Let's let's hear one of those chestnuts it's just now. Horrible. Let's hear one of I those. Actually, amazing I actually jokes had now. a dream that uh, Dean was like, I'm taking over all the banter in between songs. <laughs> and his shit was way funnier than mine. Oh, I was really mad. Because I just bomb constantly. Mic just, drop. I'm gonna try and take this just mic off. Fucking bomb. Um, um, yeah. Yeah, well, that was great. a that was a great dream. Well, yeah. you had some good ones. We played our album release shows in the last uh, few weeks ago. You had some good ones there. You I had, had that, some yeah. you had that joke about um, about Alec Baldwin. That was pretty funny. Oh yeah. Yeah, um, we don't need to go. We don't need to go into jokes, but I'll just you know. Joke. Oh, yeah. the um, Toby, uh, Toby and Dean nature walk. That was a good one. Was one. Yeah. And uh, and it's cool because ho- I got to talk about fucking Toby in the ass, uh, and, and his dad was at the yeah. show. The horrified so. looks on everybody's parents. <laughs> Ooh, that's yeah. priceless. I love the. Have they uh, never the seen you guys show. play before? Oh Come yeah, on. but oh, Toby's dad is so play. sweet that he and he wants to like me. I know, but um, I just say you make it really difficult fucking lame shit that i can tell after the show he's like all right on Oli," and i can tell by his eyes like he's like oh man why are you talking about well my, fucking my son what's going on my, my wife came to the show with uh with a couple of her professors and during the, the stuff in between she says she was like mortified about the stuff that you were saying on stage she's like oh my god <laughs> Um, but it's for the good of the joke. If I if I embarrass myself, that's that's fine. I think it, the funny th- is if we laugh on stage, mission successful, and yeah. that the and the laughter can be either at the joke yeah. or at the jokey. Uh, yeah. or, and it, what the best is when people believe what I say, even though it's so obviously just right. horseshit. Yeah. Like all that San Francisco thing with yes. Jared. Yes. Where I said he we found him in San Francisco and we hired him and he was like. He would suck uh, your dick through your jeans. He was like a prostitute <laughs> sex worker that could suck your dick through your jeans. So we hired him. Uh, and then people would come up to him afterwards and be like, oh, so you're from San Francisco. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. What was their next question? So, so uh, yeah, how much is that uh, San Francisco Yeah, so the last time I saw you was... Um, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> that's, the, that's the conversation that yeah. oh, everyone that, at that's the show... True. Which is which is fine, but it's because that's where you can that's what you have to relate to. But yeah, someone comes up, and says, oh man, that was a cool set. Yeah, last time I saw you was this city, <laughs> this venue. Yeah, they always, yeah, people always say that. Okay, I remember when I saw you guys at this venue last time of this yeah. year. It's, it, like, okay. it's pretty like you can't really go anywhere with that conversation. No. Yeah, no. What's your dog's name? Yeah, uh, that's that's about <laughs> it. But it is nice. I but mean, it, like. Not yeah, I mean it's it's funny. It's just it's just a funny thing you notice because it, it's so every time people say that, but it's yeah. so nice when people come and say it anyway. So oh, absolutely, that's yeah. cool. Not dissing them because you no. really have you have nothing to really say to someone. You're like, oh, I like your music, but you seem like a prick. So uh, <laughs> talk about the last time I saw you. It is funny though because <laughs> sometimes you'll be like, oh, so uh, yeah, I met so and so at a show. Yeah, he seemed like a nice guy. It's like, oh, he seemed a nice guy. Didn't spit at you. Didn't yell at you. Like what? Yeah, like you talk no for ten story. seconds. Like what the fuck? Yeah. yeah. Seems like a nice. Everybody seems like a nice guy unless they're kicking yeah. you or something. It's you're like, not. You're not going into business with this person. You're not gonna like yeah. open a Subway's franchise. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you would be smart too. Well, yeah. I mean, it's a Together. good investment. Yeah. Yeah. Feta stocks are fucking through the roof right now. <laughs> Adds to the sort of really like the exclusivity element more than anything else. I think you if you go to a show, it's your first if if it's your first death metal show, and all he's joking about, um, fucking analyzing poor Toby in front of his mm. dad. Like there's certain people who will just leave and they won't come back, and they're like, "This is what it is. This is what this is what this tech is the show. tech death is." is. They think it's you know. Then they go tech death equals. 
dirty, gross humor. And um, <laughs> that would be so great if someone didn't go to any tech death shows or metal shows, and then they just saw us, and they're like, "Do all <laughs> death metal singers just think that they're really bad stand-up comedians? Like, what <laughs> is this just a part of the show? Like, they just say really dumb, gross shit or talk about Land Before Time? Like, <laughs> oh yeah, you had that whole show at Land Before Time. That was, I think, I had like a few, like a week was a of funny... tour where I would just go off about Land Before Time in between songs, and people were like, "What?" the fuck is this that Why? was good <laughs> just... that was good i i think my one of my favorites that you said on stage was um some guy we're playing montreal and some guy tried to say something to you between songs he interrupted you he was yelling at you and you're like because you were telling a joke and he ruined the joke and you're like what what are you trying to tell a joke yeah oh you got a joke why don't you pull down your pants and show everybody your joke <laughs> Really and you fucking nailed it. Everyone's like, oh, I just <laughs> burned them. Nailed that guy. It's like, oh, man, you can't say anything after that. It's perfect. That's a good one. After this that, is why downhill, it takes it's been downhill since there. Ollie so long to write his lyrics. He's busy writing the jokes. He's exactly. got his type five. He's working on I his type, type five. five. I had, so I had a dream that I wrote like the funniest fucking joke ever. And like, I don't know, you know, when you like have something in your dream and it seems like such a great idea and then you wake up and you're like, this just makes no fucking sense at sure. all. So I had this dream that I got like world recognition for this joke and I woke up and it was, um, if Santa Claus became president, he would have an egg inauguration. <laughs> like, and it's cohesive, but sure. it's so fucking stupid. And in my head, like that, that second when I woke up, I was like, yes. And I was like, oh, that was it. Yeah, wow. <laughs> fucking real let down. Yeah. So, yeah. In the fucking dream uh, haze, you were like, I am, f I oh, am fucking. That was the pinnacle the of the greatest. Mm. Yeah, well, you so got it, but you still got to tell movie. it now. Yeah. Only Each. with that. Preface. That's the like, one that. You can't just be like, you can't just tell that joke. You have to be like, okay, it was a dream. So yeah, that's that the excuse. Of, yeah. yeah. That's a real nugget right there. Egg inauguration. This and more on Tech Track 5 uh, with oh, Inferi Entheos and Vulvodinia. Tickets available yeah. now. Yeah, Volvidinia, which is uh, the band named after uh, someone's pussy hurting. Vagina stuff. Yeah. <laughs> is that what it's? <laughs> yeah, they have a shirt so. that says, my pussy hurts on the back of it. <laughs> so funny. So funny. Oh, man. That's, that's one great. of the reasons why we're just like, oh, that's yeah, a bring them. I they have another shirt that says, my dick feels good. No, <laughs> no, it's no. Okay, oh, okay. <laughs> just the flip side of that. You but get it, the whole collection. We should do that though. Yeah, there's a um, my, my butthole just feels okay. <laughs> <laughs> just okay. <laughs> Dick feels great. All the various feels okay. My or, bodily yeah. organs, yeah. and and their condition. Uh, there, there's like an old back in the like um, bear share lime wire days. There was a song. I think it was maybe Lords of Acid or something. It's just called Wham. My pussy hurts, and I'll never forget oh. that as long as I live. Every time wow. I think somebody's being a wimp, I think of that <laughs> song. Wow, my pussy hurts. But um, yeah, we're, we'll make Toby's pussy hurts shirts. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Toby's little pussy hurts. <laughs> no, um, no, we won't. We won't. I remember uh, when this was about songwriting. <laughs> that's no fun. That's oh. not as fun though. Well, uh, yeah. that does I'm um, get a rash from this hat. That, that does. Yeah, it's not comfortable. Very badly. Uh, 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 what's the word? Segway. Tra wow. Segway. Segway is the word. Thank you. That does very <laughs> poorly. Segway. Segway. Subway. Segway. <laughs> Holy shit. Segway brought That's a very subway. bad oh subway to the next uh, part, which is about how you write your lyrics. Um, I'm very curious oh. to know because there, you know, you have sort of a uh, these parameters that you have to hit. It's it's not like like writing a nice pop song where there's lots of space and you can do it like you can kind of write about your feelings. It's fast as fuck there's you have a certain way that you go about it how do you get to there uh well like like we were talking about with rap like the the mechanical side of of their vocals is something to like to pick up and then use that as sort of like a little like sudoku puzzle or whatever to fit my own ideas into so because i find a lot of the time with like speed rap the content is obviously not something i would I don't pretend to fucking shoot people or whatever. Um, so, but, pretend. so just kind of using the mechanics of what they're doing and then um, kind of, and then adding in my own stories. Um, it's sort of like a good kickoff point. So, but there is, uh, I think that's why it takes so long to write because you have an idea of something and I want to have a cohesive story um, so that, you know, if someone says, what's this, you can explain it. Um, but then within that, it's like it has to fit 
in this riff, it has to be this many syllables. Um, there's certain, you know, vowels that you can't say as fast as others. So you end up just like having an idea and then just picking it apart uh, until it'll just you know, line up perfectly. Um, so it's just a really long and daunting process, which is why I put it off as long as possible. Um, has that by by the time like you finish it's really it's rewarding but like when you're like okay first fucking line of the first song it's like you know pretty pretty daunting because um because it just takes work and i'm lazy i don't like work <laughs> no um but yeah and it also helps doing pre-pro like we'll do gibberish patterns in pre-pro oh, yeah. uh, that like dean and spencer mostly will help me with so we'll you know because sometimes sometimes it's really obvious what i'm going to be doing um, like if it's just a good tempo and it's just a straight blast and I can just match the snare, those, those parts sound cool. But if it's like, okay, this is a more open kind of spacey, um, riff and we need, you know, a cool pattern. That's not just like a four, four pattern, then we'll get together and I'll just like make up fake, fake lyrics that are generally about chickens or yeah, Ninja Turtles. chickens or Toby, Ninja Turtles, Ninja Turtle time. I just want to say a quick, quickly, we have somebody in the comments. A big kid says Subway. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. <laughs> anyway, back to the Big lyrics. kid says Subway. Yeah, I mean, like a lot of time, Ninja Turtle time, Ninja Turtle time. You have... Uh, yeah, to, uh, some Toby... So, oh, some yeah. What was that Toby one? lyrics. I forget the Toby lyrics. But, Toby, uh, did you get that letter that I sent to you today that's... Oh, yeah. That Toby, did you get the letter that I sent to you today that said that I'm in love with you? Yeah, right. And then, there you yeah. Go. yeah. <laughs> so there's that... <laughs> Yeah. That's a good warm up too. Just backstage, you can just. Yeah. Toby one, loves that. The one you have about me is so funny. Oh well. The one that you say, how you say you love me, is so funny. I love that one. That one. Oh, I think that one just. Dean dirties his diapers in daycare. Was oh, one. there you go. That was there. a sound check <laughs> yeah. one. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. There you go. Yeah. Um, Baby eats Subway. <laughs> <laughs> when you're, um, can you give me an example maybe of? a line that you maybe a gibberish line that you started with and what it wound up being um oh man that'll be hard to if you got to remember um i have all the pre pro right here you want to play it yeah. <laughs> or like maybe a, oh. a a a notable line from the album something that you're proud of and tell me a little bit of how it came out came uh, yeah um, i mean ninja turtle time came out to uh, ninja turtle AU, time. aum uh, oh yeah, up here on yeah, up Universal. here on Universal Migration. Yeah, there you go. Ninja Turtle to leak time. up all the vitriol to get a category. It's like Ninja Turtle time, Teenage Turtle time, Ninja <laughs> Turtle time. Because <laughs> I was trying to figure out fives, like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, yeah. five, and it was like a really weird pattern. Um, so that helped uh, using Ninja Turtles. <laughs> That's true. Um, uh, and then there was a cool part in um, what song is that in? That uh, is. I don't know. Um, we're like, we, Dave, we, it was a break and, um, and Dave, uh, we needed something there and what I'd written just wasn't that great. So we took a lunch break and he's like, okay, on the break, just, uh, write that part. And so I just wrote it on the lunch break and then came back and that ended up being a cool, uh, a really cool part of the album that I liked. Um, that also used like a robot kind of sounding voice where I did an inhale shotgun, which I've never done. Uh, and then mixed it with an exhale, so it kind of sounds like a robot uh, that Dave helped me figure out. Um, yeah, what that is in Drone Corpse. There you go. Yeah, that's in Drone Corpse Aviator. Yeah, so there's a little break in there, and it kind of sounds robot-y. Uh, and that was a cool, just a cool thing that we came up with that uh, that now I'm going to use all the time. Overuse. Overuse it, yeah. yeah. As soon as you get a good idea, just fucking do it to death. Do it Slather to death. it all over yeah. everything, yeah. like yeah. too much yeah. mustard really on your up. on your subway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> scrub away. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> um, Scumway. Is there a is there like a lyrical theme to the album um, that everything kind of touches on, or um, are they mostly just individual songs? Yeah, the guitar solos were like really. <laughs> Like I mean, so what I tried to do with the solos when I was writing them was, fuck, um, uh, like fine, whatever. Yeah, no, it, it there's a there's a theme to the whole album and it kind of splits the two the two different like counter themes to, uh, in different songs. Um, so which was just basically again based on a dream, not about Santa Claus. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, based on a dream I had. It's uh, only two categories then, of dreams: songs, dreams yeah. about Santa Claus, and Santa Claus, that are and then like people giving birth to serpents. Whatever. Um, <laughs> there, yeah. there is somebody in the comments that says, uh, Derek Honkus. I remember for the nail and mix session, Dave left in the Barbara line in the files. Oh, yeah. So there was a part where you were Barbara. doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in the files, yeah. 
It's uh, I don't I don't know what I was doing there, pretending to be some like shitty fat husband or something. Yeah, I think, burr, burr. <laughs> yeah. Where's my biscuits? Yeah, I think that's funny because if you have the nail in the mix thing, then you're just like, what? what the fuck is that? There's a lot of those in there for the new album too. I know, there's one where you're like, my dad's dick is dead. Oh yeah, I buried it in his ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or I buried it in my ass. Yeah, yeah. I mean, whoever really makes sense. Matter. Yeah. Uh, my dad's dick died, so I buried it in my right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's some good ones. Th- those are more <laughs> impactful to the, the writing of the album than the actual Absolutely. lyrics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those lyrics. are. The it's things. funny because no, like aside from Dean, like nobody in the band really gives a shit about the lyrics. <laughs> They're like, oh yeah, cool. I'll just just get them done. Let's figure that, it out. That's true. Just fair enough. Like I don't know the scales. that right. They're using or yeah, I yeah. don't need to know that. Just, yeah, you don't know the drum beat or whatever. Yeah, I mean. Maybe. Um, but yeah, there there is a consistent lyrical theme and uh, just started as um, having a really weird dream and then I'm trying to, you know, take that and take it in a bunch of different directions and uh, yeah, and just isolating myself and uh, going down a hole and uh, mm. yeah. So what, what is the, the, what is the theme? So it's, I had this dream where people were giving birth to non-humans, like it was this thing that would give birth to like women to give birth to this thing instead. Um, and it would like bite its um, bite the inside of its mouth and it would fill with gold and people could see their future in this uh, pond of gold in this serpent's mouth. So nobody, everyone just became complacent that humans were just not being born anymore. And these things were being born because it would benefit them. Uh, and I just thought that was a really weird fucking dream to have. Um, cause I was like, this isn't normal. And it was just, and everyone was totally fine with it. Uh, so, and they were called the bow and in the dream. So, uh, yeah, so I woke up and then I was just kind of took that idea and was like, okay, what would happen to humanity, uh, if that happened? And then I was like, where do the humans go that are unborn? So like reverie on the onyx and train of incarnation, uh, are about the humans that were never born because they got replaced. So they're in this realm where the bow and are from so there's sort of like a parasite that travels through different dimensions through birthing canals so um so yeah just kind of went off on a on a fucking just a dark hole uh and uh just kind of wrote about that and uh i think it, it worked for the concept i think and uh yeah kind of accompanies the music pretty good yeah i mean i didn't i would have had to read the lyrics a little more closely and by that more closely, I mean at, at all. Um, to... Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> nobody <laughs> reads lyrics. Would you? Thing. I mean, there was a really awesome dude. That, was it Prague Notes? He did a, a, a recap oh. of like an explanation of all the what he thought the lyrics meant for all of our albums so far. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, really long essays on the Huge. on all the lyrics, and yeah. which is crazy that he spent that much time on my bullshit. But um, yeah. but yeah, he pretty much nailed it too. So really, oh, yeah, that yeah. He cool. he got a lot of it. A lot of it bang on which sort of validated like okay i'm not just writing total bullshit if one guy well, liked it yeah that's funny i actually i have a question on here um that i like that i i don't think i've actually asked on on the podcast yet but i was hoping to get the chance which is basically do you think that people are picking up what you're putting down like you go into a writing process you have intention you have things that you about what you do that you think are cool of course or a certain way that you're doing it do you think that in general, when people are listening to your music, that they're getting it, not just on a lyrical basis, but also the, the musically, the things that you're trying to do. Do you think that, do you think that they get it? Um, I don't know. I mean, they like how fast it is. <laughs> so. I, I mean, I think that it's something that, uh, that hopefully you pick, pick up new things as you keep listening. Like, I don't think people are putting it on and just like, Oh, I get this song, fucking hundred percent. But um, I, I, th- I think honestly, like you, you, you listen to the music, and like the thing that's scary about releasing an album is that you put it out, and now it no longer really belongs to you. It's like whoever listened to it. Like I mean, I, I love yeah. bands that I list, like old albums I listened to, you know, ten, fifteen years ago or whatever. I love them for my own reasons, and that's going to be different than the people that wrote them, and and it, that's fine. That's kind of what what music is all about. So, um, you know, like I have a buddy. <clears throat> who uh, he put out several albums many years ago, and he says, yeah, you know, the thing that I'm always stoked about is the endurance or the style of beat. He's a drummer, style of beat I'm trying to do or whatever, and the stuff that people get really stoked on are the single bell hit that I do somewhere or 
one snare hit that I do in an extra spot. And, oh, that part's really cool. It's like, so it doesn't, like, it's, it's, not, it's not really like you're saying, are people picking up what you're putting down? It's like, well, they're, they're picking up whatever they're going to find based on their own brain. And that's like, which might not be what you think is, the, was the, is you know, the, it's the not, highlight. Yeah, almost definitely it's not going to be because they don't know your influences. They didn't, they've never listened to speed rap or maybe if they have to listen to different stuff or whatever. And, you know, or they, they really love how gross this guitar part sounded or how, you know, uh, how simple the bass line was here. Or, or maybe they don't hear it separated like that at all. They just hear this wall of noise and they like that. And that, all of that is totally different than, like, I mean, I personally don't like the bass lines at all. Oh no, nobody uh, does. So, yeah. so none of that's for me. It's just not for me. It's not a big deal. Like it's not for yeah. me. Recording at halftime and speeding it up is not. That really it's a just good. not something I would do personally. Yeah, <laughs> I would never. Yeah, exactly. I would never play record every single note, note by note, note by note. Yeah, like he, like or he does. Tools. Yeah, exactly. Um, and if you watch him play, you'll you could tell why he's not so good no. at his uh, yeah. instrument. Butterfingers. We yeah. Call him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, um, he's good. He's fine. Yes, he is. Uh, he's yeah. good. What um, are we talking about? <laughs> yeah, what we're talking about. <laughs> here's here's one. Here's one. What's something that you guys do in your songwriting that nobody else does? You Ooh. think? I don't. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't, know I don't we think do that there's anything. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. like nobody. I don't know. Uh, it seems to me that people get really impressed when they're like, wow, well, you write all in the same room? But it's like, well, yeah, but that's how people have been writing in bands since like the fucking 40s or something. Like, that's how people have been writing in bands. Yeah. So that's not new. That's old. It's not new. Yeah. Um, um, it's new to write in, uh, you know, in separate places and everybody writes a song or everybody writes their guitar part or everybody writes whatever and then they piece it all together. It's like, that's new. Um, so, I mean, I don't think we're doing anything different i think that we're just focusing on creating the the music that we love to write and you know i i really when i listen to the album that we just put out it's um i'm like oh man i'm really proud of that it, it, it's not groundbreaking necessarily in any way it's just in my opinion our best music that we've ever written so i'm a fan of it so you yeah know, definitely that's, something i would want to put on and be like oh i'm stoked on this album. yeah yeah and it's you know it's uh it's just that's kind of why we do it. So it's it's not it's not like we're breaking new ground necessarily. We're playing really fast, but I mean bands have played fast ever since, you know, fucking Slayer. Well, we play faster, but yeah, but you they know. were the fastest at that time. Sure, and, and they couldn't get faster. Yeah, and then yeah, so someone will get yeah. So there's lots of people faster than us out there, but yeah, um, yeah, maybe not all playing together or you know. I, th I think that there's too much, a lot of the time there's too much of an emphasis on being like completely original. It's like, nah, it's just, you, you know, we're all good musicians, so we'll just do our best at writing music and we'll, we'll, we won't stop until we are very, very proud of it. And and I that's worked out really well for us. And that's, I, I don't know, I think that's how successful musicians do it. So, you know, take from your in, your influences and, you know, like use them honestly and then you're fucking all good. And write things that you that are fun to to listen to, yeah. You know, that that excite you to listen to. Like yeah. I, I we did that with a lot of just like kind of crowd pleaser riffs, yeah. Where it wasn't super technical, but and I think it was after touring with Aborted because they just have those like crazy crowd pleasing riffs, yeah. Um, and and we were like, oh, you know, we should write some of those because they're fun, like they're fun to play live, and uh, and it's kind of easy to lose sight of that sometimes, so it's cool to keep that in mind when you're writing. It's like, just, is this fun? To, like challenging to play, obviously. Sure. But kind of that balance of like how challenging versus how fun. Um, so you can kind of, you know, you get through the challenging part and then there's a bit of satisfaction to playing it. You're like, oh, now this is like a part where I can just enjoy what's going on. The part oh, where... Dumb guy, dumb guy riffs. Yeah. <laughs> dun dun. Yeah, dun duns. The part where... Dun duns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a kind of an ongoing um, theme in my... Friday stream where I listen to people's music, the Jun Jun riff, where it's like the typical metalcore Jun 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 and then yeah, a hundred fucking times. They're great. You need you need some dumb guy riffs. Yeah, we have a we we have one in the song. I can't remember which. Oh, Acrid Cannon. It's called Girthworm Jim. That's a real dumb guy riff. Girthworm Jim. Yeah, that's we try. I think we tried to go as dumb guy as possible. Yeah, it was real dumb. Well, it's the part in your set where. The, the crowd goes from counting, they're like, and like 
standing real still trying to get every and uh and then they you know and then it's 1994 like you know right. yeah toby's dad in nirvana jumping up and down yeah, up yeah. And down, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. um so you but you consider to a degree the whether or not a song's going to pop off live then like in as you're writing it sometimes you go like all right well let's get this fucking crowd moving at this part of course yeah, yeah. i mean we didn't get it to do that really in person this time but you know, usually we'll, on the way to the studio, we'll be like, oh, let's play six or seven shows and like tweak it or whatever. But this time, we, well, not usually. We did that last time. We were going to do that this time, but we couldn't. So we just had to kind of guess. And uh, it turned out different. Like it would have turned out differently had we played shows beforehand. We were like, oh, that part, you know, we should double that or whatever. Because it really gives us perspective. We're like, oh, I think that, you know, playing that live, really feeling that part that does need to be longer, you know, because this album, we jammed the songs in their entirety less than usual. Mm -hmm. When we first started writing, we would remember all of the songs. Like our first album, we just memorized all the songs to go to the studio. Yeah, Just memorized them. So that was bad because we fucked up so much stuff (laughs) in the studio. You listen to the stems, you're like, wow, there's a lot of wrong notes. And then the (laughs) second one, we're like, let's do pre-pro for four of the songs for some reason. And then the rest of them we'll just memorize. And again, lots of fucked up notes. And then for the third album, we're like, let's do pre-pro for every single song. And that was great. Um, still some fucked up notes. But uh, but this one, we're like, let's go 100% with pre-production, demo everything out really clearly. Then there's no, and tab out a lot of the stuff. Then there's not really much room for, uh, for fucked up notes. And if there uh, are any, then, uh, well, Sorry. we already have your money, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got to tab it out so that Guitar pro-, pro can play the parts for you in the studio anyways. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, we did get uh, Sheet Happens Publishing. Go to sheethappenspublishing.com. Use code Redeem for fifteen percent off. We did get them <laughs> to um, to do the Cold tab cut book. combos at Subway. Or yeah, <laughs> on, on cool. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to tab out the album, and they actually tabbed it out uh, with their transcriber. So they had a guy tab out the album. So think about that. That's not a fun job. That's no. a bad job. Hell no. I don't envy that job. guy. Speaking of bad jobs, yeah. Yeah, speaking of yeah, yeah. I'd rather work at fucking Subway. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah. is there anything that you've no. done in on previous albums that you consciously was like or like we are not going to do that again on this next one like let's never do that again. French horn? No. It's, we did French horn on the first one and it turned out really good. Yeah, it was actually kind of cool. We I wish we had done that more. Um bring back Let's that. see. French we horn. never do filler and we continue to never do filler as in like, you know, Filler is like a good, a good, uh, it's like a broad term for just like an instrumental part that doesn't have maybe a lot of substance, you know, synthy kind of spacey open stuff that, you know, isn't necessarily the same type of thing that we would focus a lot on, uh, in comparison to like, say a riff or a drum beat or whatever, you know, we don't do much of that. We've done a little bit of that in the past, but not really. So we continue to not do that. Um, uh, we try to anyway, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's anything else that we avoided. No, uh, we always say we're going to do longer guitar solos, and then I feel like we never do it, and that's probably fine. That's probably good. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear more. Nobody wants to hear more. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think this album might be our shortest. Yeah, yeah, maybe. So, but may- with the most songs, with the with uh, with the it? most full songs. Yeah. Yes, eight songs is the most we've ever done. Our first album, we had seven tracks or second one we had eight tracks but one of them was like an instrumental thing that you know again we're not you know not really going to do that again i don't think maybe we will well we also because with like uh with dark horizontal on uh, yeah on the last album we were gonna write two songs and then we decided to just like write an interlude in the song and make it a bit longer of a song yeah um which we did and then i think we would and then this time i think we we're gonna do something similar and we decided to just make an eighth song instead yeah. of making a longer one. And then we ended up doing, you know, Ohm, which is a, which is a much shorter song or a little bit shorter song, um, which we'd never really done before. Um, so that was something new to this album that we didn't do before. It's just very a, short, a very short, as fast as you can go song. We, we almost um, always put our fastest song at the end. And so we kept doing that for this one. The last song is 400 BPM. Uh, so it's yeah. a fast one we wrote. And Three second song. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And it is bad. Yeah, <laughs> it's it not is. a good song. <laughs> <laughs> it sucks. But, but buy it, though. Oh, yes. Yeah, buy it. Buy it's bad. it. It's bad. Yeah, buy, buy it. it. Buy it. Yeah. 
So speaking of guitar solos, do you have a certain way that you go about <laughs> writing your <laughs> solo? Do I have a certain way of going when going about writing solos? Yeah. Do you? Um... Uh, I wish I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just loop it and try to come up with something. But man, it is. Uh... It's not an uplifting podcast. This this is this is us. <laughs> well, it sounds like how... every part of your process is so punishing. <laughs> I think that I I always try to and and I I'm lucky to be in a band with a guy who not this guy uh, who is very good at writing simple but catchy melodies. I'm okay at it and I can do okay, but I think I get caught up in my head too much oh, sometimes, coming making it too technical or whatever. But Toby writes these really catchy melodies. He's been doing it since our first album. He'll write a catchy melody in a solo, and I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, that's a really cool thing. You simplified it. You just want you didn't go all out, you know, and and uh, you 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 had a really great melody. And so I'm always trying to do that. I'm like, let's let's do a really simple but really great melody. Um, the problem with that is that our solos are so short because our music is so fast that you don't have a lot of space to build a melody and let it sort of, so it's tough. It's always, it's always a trade off being like, okay, so I want to have a flashy part, but I also want to have really solid melody. And so it's a balance to write essentially what is a mini song inside of the song. Like a guitar solo really is like, it has a start and an end. I mean, it's like, it's a mini song that lasts eight bars or four bars or whatever. So trying to make that it's a complete thing where somebody listens to just the solo, they're like, oh, okay, I get it. So that's, a, it's a, it's a tough one to write. And, uh, and I'm always trying to go, I'm trying to go simpler, but still maintain something really cool. And I think I did that on this album a few times where I'm like, yeah, that solo, like that one turned out really well. The solos in Drain of Incarnation turned out quite well. Those are some of my favorites that I've ever written. Yeah, those are those ones are cool. Right. That song has a lot of leads yeah. in it. That's a lot. Um, so, which and is I, great. I think everyone in the band had a bit more of an attention span too for the for those. Like, there's a lot of the time that will be like they're developing solos, and we're like, ah, this part's too long out of right. You know, because we're not playing it, so we're like, oh, it's too long. But I think that song in particular is like everyone realized, like, okay, this is really cool to have. A bit more solo time here. Like, I think that we have, let's see, I have, uh, Toby has a solo, then I have a solo, and Toby has a solo, and I have a solo, I have a lead, and Toby has a lead at the beginning. So there's like five or six sections in that song where they're like... It's like 80 shred style. Like, yeah, and I mean, it's not, it's not like first fragment where we're doing like lots of harmonized dual guitar stuff. It's like our own little things that, you know, I think it worked really well in the song. That song is... Uh, one of my favorites it starts chill and it goes really heavy and it's got some stuff we've never done before with the guitars and that's a that's a cool one um, what kind of stuff uh we put very very low heavy chuggy chords but behind some melodic riffs that sounded really gross on their own but in context sound great and it's like this dun, 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 all down picked like i got toby to record that because toby's down picking is way better than mine and it's like just these like really heavy sludgy kind of chords that that add a lot of low end to the section where you know ever since we've been touring as a band since 2009 or 10 or whatever we've always like been like okay well we have a part where both of us sweep well that doesn't sound good live because there's no low end now the bass is doing crazy tapping we're both sweeping it's like well where's the where's the substance to it so we um so we, in the studio this time, we thought, you know what? Let's just put those guitars in and we'll figure it out later. Because we like to write what you'll hear live, but we only have two guitar players. So this one, we have a harmonized part, but we also have a very low chuggy riff underneath. And we're just going to have to figure it out. Either we'll sample it, whatever, or one of us will sacrifice the harmony for the solo or for the, for the riff and we'll track that or whatever live. But I think for this one, we just said, you know what? we've been not wanting to put in tracks live. Like we really don't put live tracks in almost ever guitars or whatever. This one, we're like, fuck it. We're just going to put some stuff live because we want to have this composition like as it is on the album. And that's going to do, uh, that's going to do a better job of getting the song across. And it's going to be way cooler. So fuck it. We'll yeah. just do it. But it's know? never the complex part. No, either. you know, it's not, no. it's not the highlight. Unless it's a harmony of a solo. 
in which case we'll have to track because that gets into the problem again of losing the low end when we go both go up high it's like okay well you know we like to have that sort of that low end there and it becomes too thin and you know so so yeah harmonies will will track maybe but for the most part yeah nothing complex is going to be playing through the speakers um well i mean we'll be playing yeah it will play complex stuff but at least now i've got the the headline for this archspire complex, fucking yeah. cheaters oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> including guitars and backing tracks yeah don't listen right. to them yeah. anymore yeah yeah exactly yeah. i kind of like the sped up tracking the, yeah. <laughs> i kind of like the pulling the rug feeling of that when you um when you see a band live and you've got those twin guitar harmonies and suddenly it's just those over the bass. Whereas in the studio, it was very full sounding. I think sometimes that works really well because then it's, first of all, it's something new. It's a new version. It doesn't sound exactly like the album. Um, and yeah. you can hear it a little bit clearer, but it also can feel a bit weak and you don't want to, yeah. you know, you're not going to bring a third guy on tour just for the one, <laughs> one bit. So no, all he's been practicing a little bit of guitar. Yeah. Why don't you show him what you got? Yeah, I can I can just fucking shred now. Oh, dude, it's been it, it, the last. What have you been practicing? Hearty right? bowl of oatmeal, just <laughs> serving it up, hot, piping hot. Yeah, we're gonna do the Iron Maiden thing. Just yeah, Maiden. Periphery does that too. They have three guitar players. It's like who else does? Well, so, they can afford it. That's true. We can't afford a third guitar. Yeah. <laughs> you, you're already bringing a merch guy slash bus driver. I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, slash sandwich artist. Yeah. <laughs> Slash a sandwich artist. What slash is a sandwich. Yeah, I'm gonna go on a subway career. killing spree. Yeah, <laughs> no, I thought you were slash the sandwich artist. Oh yeah, slash. Yeah, he imagine if you go now. to subway. Oh, wow. Okay, so okay, so get this. Get this. So imagine slash. <laughs> oh, he you works go. at subway. Slash. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Um, wow. that's it. Yeah, that is it. Okay, well, it was great talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> that was the that was, you guys talking about. GNR Do, doing Toby real now. good, but <laughs> I put on the reality. slash hat, and it's yeah. like, oh, <laughs> this interview is over. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. Well, I mean, I'm wondering what would what'll what'll sum this up real good. I guess, what is the like? What's the song on on the album that you guys are the most proud of? And why do you think it turned out that well, as opposed to the other ones, which are trash? No, but I don't know if we all have the same song uh, choice. Yeah, I don't know. I think that we picked um, "Your Own Corpse." Uh, yeah. was we picked as the first song because it's like, and for our you know biggest budget video. Yeah, um, just because it kind of had all of the elements of our writing style in sort of one song. So. Um, a bit more than the other ones, I think. But I don't think that's necessarily my favorite song. No, it's probably the most fun. Mm. Um, yeah, it's fun to play. Yeah, it's, it's not It's to not play. too crazy. There's a couple parts I'm like, whoa, that's kind of tough. But for the most part, it's like, yeah. okay, so that's more fun. Um, yeah. It's it's more, uh, I think it's pretty catchy, um, and it's a perfect length. But, I mean, it, in terms of, like, whatever song I'm most proud of, yeah, I mean, maybe Dream of Incarnation uh, or AUM or something. But, I mean, I'm not I, – I don't know. I mean, I think the cool thing is when we see fans talking about our albums, it's almost like this album seems like a little bit more so this way is generally when somebody says, what's your favorite song on our album, then it'll be different answers. And that's a great sign. Yeah, there's not a unanimous, like, best no. song. So this one – I'm not really seeing a unanimous thing. I'm seeing the singles are that we released are are popular, but also Dream of Incarnation, the uh, Abandoned Linear, is like a bunch of other tracks are also people's favorites. So it's like oh, that thing. I think that's, that's a great that's a great sign. Mm -hmm. So so I don't know. I mean, I think we wrote the album so that every song was something we were really proud of. There was not one song where we're like. Yeah, you know what? We're done. Yeah. People won't, you know, they'll like the singles and then this one will be a lull in the album. Like, I don't think there's anything like that. And that's why it took us so fucking long to write it. <laughs> so, All killer, it's no kind of like a big song. Mm -hmm. It's a big song. That's yeah, the album. One, one big song. Yeah, one big, stupid, gimmicky song. <laughs> Was there anything? Inch, foot, <laughs> uh, one foot long. <laughs> yeah, green onions. <laughs> green onions. Yeah. Extra onions. Yeah. <laughs> 
do you think there's anything special about the way that Drone Corps came together that um, that made it sort of a, a good cross section of what your band is about, or just? Well, one one thing that we noticed with our uh, album Relentless is that the song that sucked the most in pre pro turned out to be among the best when we tweaked it a little bit right before the studio. So the song Remote Tumor Seeker sucked, and then we're like, Toby and I went to my place and we're like. Had a bottle of wine, both wore robes. No, th- we, we did do that, but <laughs> nothing else happened, I promise. Um, so he was like, t- you know that part behind your neck? Where, no. Uh, <laughs> so he uh, he was like, he and I worked on simplifying the riffs and making them more cohesive. And then it's like, oh, an hour of this? And then the song's way better. And I think that happened a little bit with Drone Corpse as well. It actually wasn't the best... Like it, it was like, okay, it was okay. And then we started tweaking a little bit closer to the studio as far as I remember. It's like, oh yeah, no, it started t- turning out like much better. And and then for some reason, that was the one that we felt the best represented our album. So yeah. it so turned out better than expected. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know, leaving it for a while and then coming back to it because that was the second song that we wrote, I think. That was uh, song yeah. number two. Yep. And um, yeah, no, we left it for quite a while. We left it for a long time. And then we came back to it, and 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 then we started tweaking it from there. Um, Interesting. Uh, Seems like the my uh, wife is ordering pizza. Oh, oh okay. I thought that was a scratchy. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I won. Yeah. Password. <laughs> I think it's uh it's cool, but that there's been sort of a theme throughout these um three podcasts that we've done so far about pre pro and the importance of it and how it seems like it it, it can really improve the entirety of uh of the song because you get a little bit of perspective on it or something. You get to hear it um, not as you're playing it all together as a band or whatever, something well, we like easily, that. We easily recorded the album three times before we went to the studio. Oh yeah, We recorded yeah. it once shitty. And then another time when the start, stuff started getting better and I was at home retracking my guitar parts and then we retract all the drums, and then we added the vocals, and then we retract uh, we track more of the drums, and then we retract the vocals with real lyrics. Yeah. I mean, like we did it. I mean, you know, the entirety of the pre-production session was in was including demoing stuff and sending back and forth mixes of whatever, and uh, and so yeah. I mean, yeah, we recorded the album a bunch of times. <laughs> Uh, before it came, before we actually recorded it, which I think maybe if we were less, like I think some bands might think that's overkill, but I think that's the way to make a sick album. It's, that's the way to do it. Is to, I mean, how how crazy would you be? Like you're you're, I'm gonna go record this album, but we have no idea how it's really gonna turn out. So we'll hear it for the first time recorded when we go into the studio. It's like, well, that's that's pretty crazy. Yeah, and you can't sit with any of the you know any of the ideas or. Yeah. And then it, your focus is now just the completion of it instead of just getting that out yeah. of the way and on the back burner. And that way you can focus on nuance of different parts and experiment with different things. And yeah, not have to just focusing on just getting it out. Yeah. I, I mean, in the studio, that's where it costs the money. If you have the ability, like everybody pretty much does, to record at home all your demos, then that's essentially you can consider that free even though it costs your time but it's like it's all investment into the product and it'll make the album better so it's kind of for us like kind of stupid not to but i don't think bands really go in without doing pre-pro anymore anyway so maybe smaller bands where they don't understand the importance of it but for us it's like you know so integral to making a good album that's you know or making a bad one. Or making like a bad what we one. we did. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Saying this from the perspective of someone who's never written a good album in his life. Yeah. I'm sure that's a good thing to do. Yeah. You yeah, guys did it, so you yeah. should. So people listening yeah. should not do it. Do no. not do what we do. No. Yeah, exactly. Um, so. Anything that you uh, will for sure change for the next one? based on the experience of this uh, one. I guess Jared. Jared's uh, out. Jared's out. Yeah. Toby's out. Toby is out. Toby's, oh, Toby's out. back in. Toby's, yeah. Toby's, back, Toby's in. back in. Toby's out again. Uh, Jared could be back in, maybe. Jared's back in. He's got to uh, pay. Pay to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's um, out. He's he's back, but we'll let he, we cut his pay a little bit. I think we're not going to use Dave Otero anymore. 
Mm, After no. all those things he said. Dave is out. Yeah, he's out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I um, mean, we're just going to do the same thing. I don't know. We'll, fucking, we'll yeah. do the same thing. We'll probably spend longer writing it. and Or yeah. maybe we maybe won't. Maybe spend longer tracking it. Maybe, maybe we'll do something yeah. different. Maybe the next one, I think we discussed something. Maybe, maybe we'll do something a little different. Yeah. Maybe yeah. we'll do something, something a little bit different, like maybe what we discussed. Yeah. Maybe you'll let one of those pirate riffs slip into the. Into I would the song. say that's yeah. very unlikely that's going to happen. <laughs> uh, we might let Toby do the art, the album artwork this time. Yeah, that's true. I think that'd be nice. Yeah, it would be good. So yeah, other than that, I think mm, that's, yeah. that's about it. That's right. Right. Toby's doing the art. Jared's out. Jared's out. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm doing all the banter. Jared from himself. Subway is yeah. in. Jared oh, from Subway absolutely. is. In. He's, oh yeah. Yeah. We're getting him. We're breaking him out of jail. Oh yeah. Yeah. Taste of his bait. <laughs> uh, well, guys, this was super fucking fun. Um, best one so far for sure. Don't tell, don't tell Brody and Hafey. Um, okay. Big congratulations on your album. It's amazing. Whatever. It, uh, you know, I'm sure at this point you're like, yeah, cool, great, thanks. I'm, I want to die. It was so hard to do. I'm just glad it's over. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, we want to die for yeah. for the rest Been of people. Taking vitamin D uh, every day, still want to fucking kill people. <laughs> <laughs> who people who weren't involved in the making of it. It was it was worth it for us for you to sacrifice that because it turned out great. Um, yeah. I well, like your hey, old stuff of, better. Uh, but, speaking of the making of it, that maybe what's maybe or maybe that's what's coming up. Maybe that's what we're, maybe, maybe that's tomorrow. There's maybe a, tomorrow that's coming up. Maybe the maybe it's a big long. Drawn out, really long, long <laughs> video documentary of the making of it. Maybe that's what's yeah. happening. Maybe, maybe yeah. um, filmed over years. Who knows? I'm not gonna. You know, we can't say sure. for sure who what yeah, could I be say for sure coming out for sure. about this. Before that, you know, the words documentary may come up. Maybe not. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh wow! You're changing accents <laughs> as quick as you change hats. Go back that's to that's my yeah. that's my bit. I don't do it on that's this one because I. Because it's not about this one's not about me. The Friday stream right. is about me. It's about oh God, look at me. Skip, skip that I'll one. Skip. <laughs> um, I'll take a pass on that one. So, um, y'all listening, be sure to check out Bleed the Future. It's out on all the regular places. Just Google it. You know how to use Google. Um, but sure. you, um, I was I was planning on pimping your your new guitar. Um, your artist series from kiesel but it it sold out in a day so congratulations on day. that you can't get I one bought three yeah um, there's only one available so yeah and you bought three but i <laughs> yeah. we charged you three times Back order. You, and you have one. to box it up and send <laughs> I'm it on out the phone with kiesel every got. fucking day yeah where am i guitar hey jeff <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah you get the he's tabs. a lot of money <laughs> he is fucked he's in for like fucking seven g's <laughs> um tabs uh for the album for anyone who wants to be as punished as you were on sheethappens.com. Sheethappenspublishing.com. You should redeem for 15% off. That's the one. And um, Got it down. Tech Trek 5. Tickets available yep. now featuring yeah. Enfios, Inferia, and Volvodinia. Yeah. That's and you, true. That's where you can buy um, merch from the band Volvodinia and not from Arch Spire because Arch Spire doesn't have any shirts that say, My Pussy Hurts. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. And we're working on it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you we guys. Team round the clock. So yeah. much for taking the time. Um, we are now thank coming you. up on two hours. Longest one yet. Oh, wow. Longer Holy is better. Um, so thank you so much for taking the time to be on. This will be available as an audio podcast as well soon. And um, I will hopefully see you guys when you come to LA. Yes. Because yeah. I need to get caught yeah, yeah. up on Seinfeld. Absolutely. Sounds good. Yeah, and we'll put naked yeah. gun on stage this time, actually. And you can make yeah. me some fucking sandwiches. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks for <laughs> having Subway us. Subway yeah, Also, yep. stay fresh. Yeah. Eat shit. Eat, <laughs> eat shit. <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> eat flesh. Sorry. Yeah. Eat flesh. Yeah. All right, guys. Yeah. I right. will catch you all on the flippy floppy, and uh, have a great evening, and I'm going to switch over to the other view, and you will disappear. Goodbye. All right. See you later, dude. Bye. Um. Wow, that was so much fun! Thank you guys all for watching in the chat. I was I had a little, um, you know, keeping an eye on the chat as we were going, and you guys, I you know, I wish that I could, I wish that I could ask all the questions. Um, but this was this was so great. 
Oh, oh! I, I hope this sets a precedent for how much fun they'll all be. <laughs> um, it's nice when, when they've got the time and a good sense of humor. So thank you all for watching. Um, if you guys got um, anything out of this, be sure to subscribe and hit that like button for me because, you know, this was easily, the um, I think, the most populated one of the series thus far so let the algorithm know that you liked it i mean if you if you hated it let them know that too it's all uh engagement you know you're all you're all here and uh thank you for watching please be sure to keep an eye out for when uh when this goes to an audio podcast as well that should be very soon um i think potentially uh in in january like early january I'll um, be launching the audio podcast for uh, format of it. And that's a thing like that's really important because that's where we'll, you know, those kinds of numbers like downloads of this kind of thing will be um, very instrumental in how much effort I'm able or how much time I'm able to spend on this, you know, because we can get uh, better sponsors, more and better sponsors and um, and bigger and better guests and um, all of that kind of thing. We're gunning for how do we get Metallica on here? That's gonna be that's the goal. That's the final goal. Um, although I, you know, who knows? Um, so uh, this was awesome, super fun, and uh, keep an eye out for that um, Friday stream. If you are interested in getting your songs looked at, listened to, critiqued, roasted, torn apart. And some usable input from yours truly. That starts at 1 p.m. PST every week right here on the channel. Um, and I will see you guys then.